Fox will truly change this trip into an experience you won't forget. I hope you guys are ready to embark on a voyage of passion and adventure. Have you ever loved so, someone so much that you um you had you you got a bono? Not the expression. No, literally wanted a bono. If you did, you lose two hundred thousand dollars. Would you do it? Probably not, because you have self control. But on Too Hot to Handle, the contestants are so much like Neanderthals, they can't actually figure out what they want to do, whether they want to actually sleep with the contestants or get the money. All you have to do in this show is not bang someone. If you can do that, you will literally win one fifth of a million dollars. This show should be called Do You Have Any Self Control? But it's not. It's called Too Hot to Handle. The contestants think so much with their ball sacks and vaginos that they just let that get in the way of getting some good money. Hi. I'm Leo and today we're going to take a look at probably legitimately the worst reality television show that I've ever seen. I know I said this about the last one, but this one's probably worse. So the premise of the show is simple. You cannot bone anyone. You also can't touch yourself, kiss anyone, or um, I think heavy petting, which sounds like you're just, you know, touching a dog that's overweight, but it's not at all. This is like some very sensual stuff going on. So the initial prize is $200,000. They doubled it since the last time. But every time you kiss a contestant or do something more you lose money and at the end of the show whatever's left is what one contestant walks away with so say there's 10 contestants it's a shared prize so if anybody kisses anybody they lose money it's sort of like survival if you take away the skills of survival and you just have horny people so, like I said, it's an act of self-discipline. If Skippy the Virgin was on it, he'd be a trillionaire by now. The rules change every other episode. The narrator makes me want to kill myself. Lana, the fake Alexa, makes me hate the advancement in technology since the Neanderthal days. And the contestants make me embarrassed to be part of humanity. However, I was bored and I had nothing better to watch, so I watched 10 hours of this. And here's my deep, deep dive into possibly the worst reality show in the world. Yeah, that's right. I watched 10 hours of this. What I'm trying to say is subscribe. We're almost at 600,000 subscribers. While you're at it, please join me at 16leo underscore on my Instagram. That way, you can thank me for my service to reality TV. Jesus Christ. Also, you have to really ask yourself how far we've come to as a people, like where we've gone in this day and age and where we went wrong to actually be here on a place where Netflix decides to pay contestants to be like, do you have enough self-control to not have sex? for a few days and if you do you're gonna win hundreds of thousands of dollars this is this literally is gone back to primal days i just i don't know what to say uh one more thing before we start the video i do have a sponsor and it's by 16 leo wow uh, so it currently holds a 36% on Rotten Tomatoes and audience have rated it 32%, which is fantastic. It's just something to look at. Uh, IMDB rated it a 4.7 out of 10, which is honestly 3.7 more than I would have given it. And I wanted to look at some of the comments just to see if I was actually right in my assessment. A crime against humanity. This is number one on Netflix in the USA today. This makes me weep for humanity. Worst thing I've ever watched. This is honestly the worst thing on Netflix by far. And trust me when I say that. During this pandemic, I've watched everything else. Don't waste your time. I wish I could give a zero what has come to TV. These young people are idiots. Only interested in s and money. Who could even think of a reality show like this? Must be loony. Stop making people famous. Oh, stupid people famous. I'm sorry. Dumb. I think we're in for it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> ah, here's some more. Delicious train wreck, garbage, cringy AF, so little effort, terrible show with a bad message, and actual garbage show, which I would actually genuinely probably want to see more. A show called Garbage Truck Hero, where a guy picks up all everyone's trash and then sifts through it. I'm just saying. But anyway, this is the show. Now I'm going to take you to the show in two parts. It's going to be a very long video, I'm sure, because it's a deep, deep dive. But uh, prepare, get a glass of wine, water, or something else that'll make you feel good. I hope you enjoy this amazing, amazing review. <clears throat> Let's go. What's up, big babies? It's the start of 2023 and I thought what better way to start it off than to uh, try and get one more person on the team. What we've done is created a new channel that's still secretly coming up where we do more scripted videos that have things like challenges and other things that stemmed from the main channel but have turned into their own thing. A video we did that's still gonna come out is <laughs> I ate like Nikocado avocado for a whole week. It's gonna be a really fun like expansion and hopefully if you're watching this video and you're not gonna apply for an editing position 
position, you at least think, oh, this is something exciting and subscribe to the channel. So we do have one amazing editor and the videos are looking great. I'm just looking for one more. So if this is something that you like to do, videos that are scripted, have things to follow and you can edit alongside while also making them entertaining and compelling, then please check my link in the description. There's even a video from the chief editor and that's how it should look. So if you need some inspiration, there's that. It is a very advanced position, but it does pay pretty well. And ideally, I'd just like to find one more member to expand the team because this is really something I like doing. And the fact that we're gonna do so much this year with it, just means we need some help. We don't have a deadline, but I would say within the next two weeks, I'm really looking to find somebody. Thank you to anyone and everyone who submits. I will try and take a look at all of it, if not my team will. Also, how does that video sound? There'll be videos like that. There'll be videos like I'm flying to every Denny's in the country to eat there in one day. Stuff like that is gonna be on the channel. I hope it's something that you like seeing, if it's not something that you edit for, and I will give you more information to that channel very soon. Thank you so much for any submissions, and let's get back to the video. You're gonna come to hate that sound, by the way. That is the sound of the fake Alexa called Lana. And let me tell you, she is a bitch. So enticing them in was simple, with the creation of yet another totally fake, sexy hot dating show. So that is not Lana. That is the narrator, who I don't know what her name is. And she makes horrible, awful puns throughout the show. The way that they get contestants on the show is just as bad as the actual show themselves. Contestants sign up to a show that they think is called Pleasure Island, in which they sign on because they think they're going to have lots of s and also get famous for doing it. That's a porno is what you're thinking of, guys. That's not reality TV. But anyway, all these contestants sign up to Pleasure Island thinking that they're gonna be able to pleasure themselves and get paid. When in fact, the show does a rug pull and says, no, you're on Too Hot to Handle. Is it actually true? No. Not at all, because you have to sign proper contracts that uh, the people understand their legal terms and bounds. You can't trick people, that's not really part of the industry. However, you got everybody to pretend that, so good. Pleasure Island. Hosted by none other than Dariani Santana. Oh my, Dariani Santana. She's from that thing about the stuff with the things and the people. Not Dariani Sevzanima. If I if you paid me like a hundred dollars, I couldn't say her name again. I'm reading it and I can't say it. I don't know what she is. Hello, season three. <laughs> So then the first two girls come on. You know, you're gonna see a lot of uh, half-naked people. You're gonna see a lot of boobs, butts, half-naked men. No penises, I'm sorry, ladies. But a, a lot of other things. It's eye candy. But in terms of anything else, if you're thinking of mental stimulation, sorry, this is like Einstein at a bodybuilding contest. It's, it's mismatched. I went to private school and people think I'm gonna be some up myself girl, but I probably got with half of the rugby team. So the team is more more like they're up themselves in the scroll, right? Her flex is that she got with half the rugby team, or football team, or some team. She might have got with all of the team. She's a team player. I am competitive. I'm a player on and off the hockey pit. I normally end things by sending a text. You dirty, dirty, dirty scumbag. My English accent might come and go throughout this, by the way. There's a lot of English contestants. Okay, I'm sorry. This has nothing to do with anything, but sending a text when you're gonna break up with someone, that's the worst thing you could do. I don't care that you got with half the team. I don't care that people run through you like you're a train on a Wednesday night. I'm sorry, but with a text. I don't think it's going to work out with us. It's not you, it's me. Kiss. Send. That's a flex for her. You can tell she's been with a lot of guys when that's a flex. I just like breaking up over text. It's a bit easier, isn't it? That's Izzy. The next contestant is another girl. I am definitely a black sheep in my family. I'm quite the heartbreaker. Ah, the next one is Holly. She's just, she's tall and a brunette. That's all you need to know about most of these contestants. Like in terms of redemption and who they are as characters, it doesn't actually hold any weight. Unlike a show like Love is Blind, where you can put yourself in the place of the contestants, you could probably be like, oh, I would do this in this situation and maybe even empathize. On a show like Too Hot to Handle, how often will you find yourself in a room full of people who just want to bang each other? I don't know about you, but that's that's more of a fantasy than reality for me. I've never been to KFC and been like, mm. I can give you the KFD if you want. <laughs> They'll kick me out like they normally do. I usually get what I want. Oh, I definitely ooze sexuality when I talk, even. I love when people hype themselves up on shows like this. I definitely is sexuality when I talk. I can make anything sound good. Oh, I don't hurt 
and give me a honey in my asshole. <laughs> yeah, all right. The most boring things, a frying pan, basil, coffee. God, I'm blushing. Oh, that, that all you have to do is say the word higher. Coffee, basil. Easy, Holly, please. That's not sexy, that just sounds like you're desperate. Oh my God, stop. <laughs> I'm the international playboy. Ah, then comes my boy Nathan. He's from South Africa, represents, and uh, uh, he's an international playboy. In fact, he's gone all around the world to have sex with people. So, he is a walking STD. Gotta love South Africa. I've literally flown across different countries on a plane just to go have sex. Oh, he flew on a plane, guys. I usually fly on a ship. Maybe if I'm feeling lucky, I'll fly on a car or a bicycle. Uh, but this guy actually flew literally on a plane, not even metaphorically on a subway. He's Nathan from South Africa. His IQ may be low, but his body count is higher than Ted Kaczynski. Oh, that was the Unibobber. I mean, Ted Bundy. South Africa, England, Germany, America, Russia, Ukraine, Spanish, Swedish. I'm struggling to think of the places now. So, so he flew all around the world just to bang people there. That's that's his. Uh, that's what he's done with his life so far. It's a flex and a half, my guy. I really appreciate you. I think he's a model. He's not a model citizen. If he was a Tesla, he'd be a model. C so good for him. And I love the South African representation. If we have Nathan around, there'll probably be more South Africans in different continents. The way that he's making babies. I love the representation, but I hate the fact that. <sighs> It's South Africa that's being represented. I'm definitely more of a serial killer data. Pleasure Island sounds like the sexy Olympics. That's why I'm here to win gold. What would you say that your type is? Who even comes up with these lines? Pleasure Island sounds like the sexy Olympics. <laughs> that's why I'm here to win gold. And 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 have sexy soul and bust a nut bronze. You could stop now, Nathan. And 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 and, and pussy participation. Please stop. Please stop. Definitely tall. Oh, cut me out then. <laughs> well, Nathan, you're in luck. This next girl is tall with eyes and teeth. Thank you. Thank you, narrator. This girl is tall with eyes and teeth. Yeah, so the next one is Jazz. I don't know anything about her. Have a nice smile. Okay, now I know two things about her. You, I mean, I have a lot. I have my real hair. Okay, that's good. Always good to have real hair. I have a lot of people like in my DM. It's like a little bit of a juggle. On some days you see this person and then the next person. I call it when you have a dick appointment. I wonder how the parents of these uh, these contestants feel watching these shows. Like, you know, they go on a show and they're like, Hi, mom, I'm going to be on a show. It's called Too Hot to Handle. And then they see their baby and they're like, I have a dick appointment from Tuesday to Friday. How, how would you feel like as the dad? Like, I gave you the keys to my car on Tuesday. That's what you did with it? Please get it cleaned. I am definitely a sucker for a bad boy. If I see something that I want, I'm gonna go after it. Are you a model? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, you know, like I said, most of these contestants, their claim to fame is just the vapid nature of their lifestyle. I didn't know when uh, having sex and being vapid was a flex, I guess. I'm all for that, just by the way. I'm about that. I think sex positive's fine. Do whatever you want. I'm not judging you for that, but the fact that you could go on a show and then flaunt that to the world and think, this is going to be my opportunity, that's delusional. Sure, cool. I don't have a type. type. Of girl. No? I don't have Nothing no at type. all? I like them all. Like anything? <laughs> so the next guy is called Truth, and he's the biggest liar on the show, which is just the icing on the proverbial cum cake. Sorry. Wow, what a dude. He's just a, he's just a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I wish he was on the show more. I wish he was on every season because every time he'd say something, another girl's like, you said that to me. And he's like, I, I didn't say I didn't. I, I was just I was just trying to be like, you know, the truth. I wasn't lying. I just didn't tell you the, the, the full story. Truth will always 99.9% .9 tell the truth. But my real name is Robert. Oh, I thought your name was like Truth Jones or something. Robert sounds way worse. Fine. Okay. But I'm not gonna call you Robert. I'm gonna call you Truthful. Truthful of shit. <laughs> Sorry. Before I was in the girls, I was in the basketball. I would have a few girls come to the game. One over there, one over there. Sometimes I walk past the girls and just do this. It's no big deal. I could do this all day. Okay, so Truth's best thing is that he spins balls. <laughs> That's his claim to fame, and he's also a basketball player. It's kind of sad. He's also one of the shorter ones on the show, but anyway, I guess after basketball, he ended up just being hot. I don't know. Uh, girls, can you comment and tell me if anybody on the show actually is good looking? I don't know how the Brahma 
some of the walks. Like I looked at the gulls on the show and I don't think they're like fantastic looking. I think everybody looks fine, but nobody stands out to me as like, oh my God, drop dead gorgeous. This is more like, yeah, I'm at a party. I can see that you've done your makeup. Uh, and if I'm a little drunk, I might hit it. Are you ever told that you looked like a celebrity? Harry Styles. Harry Styles, eh? <laughs> this can only go in one direction. Get out, get the f get out, get the f out, just leave. Just, oh my God. I feel like I'm a big fish in a small pond. Anything happens in my village, it's like major news. Like if an old woman fell off, <laughs> it'd make the front page of the paper. Uh, this is Harry. He looks like Harry Styles, according to Harry. Uh, I don't know if that's an insult to Harry Styles or just a very big compliment to him. He doesn't sound like Harry Styles and he laughs at everything he says. So most of the time after he says something, it's followed up with <laughs> And I don't know. He's apparently from a small village, which sounds like a story waiting to happen from an evil supervillain, but okay. I guess this is Harry Styles' stunt double. How can you settle down when you've got the option of so many girls? Cringe. <laughs> yeah, man, when you have to say cringe and then laugh. I feel like, I feel like someone told him to say that, right? They were like, Ari, Ari, say something. And he's like, well, you know, girls. And they're like, no, 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 you have to say something cringy. And he did it. And he even said it's cringe. I feel like that's how they get people to keep watching the show. They made them say the stupidest things possible. And they were like, now people are definitely going to watch it. We've not done all the contestants, by the way. We're still meeting the contestants. And I don't care about any of them. None of them seem redeemable in any way, shape or form. Hey, was fun for Joyce, bro. When people look at me, they automatically think I'm a girly girl. But secretly, I have got a little bit of a mouth trait in me. Ah, so that's Bo, spelt with an X, and uh, yeah, she's like a little, little, I guess, what would you say, tomboy stuff, and out of all of them, I think she's the most charming, just in the way that she doesn't seem to care, she just, she says something about going to date anywhere, and she's not really like high maintenance, which is kind of nice, that's probably the most relatable person on the show. Such a classy lady, aren't I? <laughs> I mean, I'm not romantic at all. I'm happy with a diet at KFC, to be fair. Yeah, that's my girl right there. I think we, me and her would be good friends. <laughs> I'm happy with a diet at KFC. I'm happy with wings at KFC. I don't even care if the date leaves. That's just more wings for me. Secret herbs and spices. Get out of my face, lady. I'm eating the chicken. I change my man more than I change my knickers. Damn, God, I like her. Is that because you do you not change your knickers often? Or I don't know. I don't even know. Maybe Bo's been sitting with the same pair of panties since 1963 i don't who knows there's a lot to uncover about this woman but she's taking the early lead for slightly my favorite person but then comes my actual favorite person but who does he remind me of jason momoa <laughs> thanks boys looks go away with age so it doesn't really matter as long as she's like down to earth i can share a moment of silence with her and have a good time i love it he is my favorite dude on the show he comes on the show thinking it's pleasure island and on the show ridicules people by saying i don't care what looks i like i want to be on love is blind i really care about personality whilst also still trying to bang people this man is a walking contradiction he looks like jason momoa if he lost courage and weight and <laughs> and he's got the worst singing voice that i've heard i just really appreciate him for being on the show sing you a love song so you may have seen my face before. No. I am on the cover of Mr. Hawaii calendar. Mr. May is like this. You know, I'll take you around. I can show you where the dolphins swim in the morning because every flower is unique, just like every woman in this world. If you're a bee and you're just right, you'll get a sweet honey, baby. I always get that sweet honey. What? What the, what? Oh my God, Patrick really fell off at the end there. If you're a bee and you're, and you're just right, you'll get a sweet honey, baby. I don't, if I'm trying to break this one down. If you're a bee and you're sweet, do you, is he saying you get honey or is he saying I'm going to make a honey baby with you? Ah. Is he going to dip his dick in a jar of honey? Because I don't know if that's legal. It's really frowned upon, bro. Thank you. It's yeah. beautiful. And Hawaii, you, uh, if you put it in your right ear, that means you're taken. But it's in your left, I mean, the same. Damn. So then Pat gives Holly a flower and he says, if you put it in your right ear, it means you're taken. And she instantly puts it in her left ear. She's like, not for you, Pat. No, 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 no. Because she has her eyes on Nathan, the South African playboy. I'm finished. I'm finished. I flirt with anything and anyone. I love a little snog. I love that word. So then we have Georgia, the Australian, another great representation for my country. She says she will flirt with anything, which is just, that's how Australians normally, you know. Good eye, mate. Do you want to fuck? You already know my name. 
I am extremely sexual. Guys like that, and I think that's why they get super in love with me. I love bad boys. Yeah, that's that's why they get in love with you because you're sexual. That's that's probably exactly what it is. The problem is on the show, people fall in love with Georgia, and she is one of those girls who's like, yeah, as soon as someone gets a bit too touchy or a bit too nice to me or tries to care about me, I hate myself and I hate them more. So I'm just gonna let them go, which is a really, really, really toxic trait. But this show is basically a toxic vat just filled with lots of people. So yeah. A narcissist, Australian boys from my area. Area, a bit douchey. International guys just have the spice that I want. I'm excited to just rip anyone's clothes off at this point. Right, so yeah, like I said, she's a very sensual creature. She's basically like a thought Margot Robbie, Margot Thotty, I guess. And uh, lots of the people on the show really, really do like her. I guess people really like the Australian accent when it's not like, yeah, my. <laughs> It's not like a crazy accent. People are like, that's that's a very beautiful accent. It's just that Australians put it on a bit too strong or uh, lots of people that you meet are like bogans or people who have <laughs> just got the hectic accent. He's gonna take my calf muscle straight out. And if he locks down, I'll bleed out and die. But when it's when it's toned down, it's a bit exotic, yeah. The next person we meet is MGK Stunt Double. I forgot his actual name. I'm definitely a wild one. I like to break all the rules. I rip up all my clothes. I'm essentially homeless. Look. Homeless chic. Oh, f I sound like a prick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yes, you do. Uh, this is Stevan. He's a uh, hundred percent a trust fund baby, or someone who grew up in a household that was very privileged because he seems like someone who has no problems and then just creates them because he doesn't have anything better to do. He's also got the tattoos of a musician and the talent of a baker who tries singing. So, <laughs> I'm definitely a bit of a bad boy, but I've got a sensitive side as well. If I open that up, it's bees on honey. Man. What is with the honey references? You'll get a sweet honey, baby. It's bees on honey, man. I love bad boys. Definitely a bit of a bad boy. I'm definitely a sucker for a bad boy. What what the fuck does bees on honey mean? Next time we're gonna hear another contestant. Hey, my name's Graham. I'm I'm a I'm a Barry the Bee. I'm gonna bury that bee in your ass. You like jazz? Okay, I'm gonna put my stinger in your butt. We're gonna make a bee baby. What? Oh, could you be any more stupid? I love everybody. That's not my fault. I am not looking for love. I'm not here to be a good boy. People either love me or they f***ing hate me. No, I don't think anybody loves you. I just don't think people hate you either. Stefan, I keep forgetting he existed. I didn't even know his name. I just think he's MGK stunt double. Every time I see him, I'm like, oh my god, he's gonna try rapping now. And I don't know whether I'm happy or sad about that. But we finally met all the contestants. <sighs> And now we start what they think is Pleasure Island. Once they get comfortable, the host is going to reveal to them that this show is actually too hot to handle. And then she leaves. That's right, the host f***s off. As soon as she tells you what the show is, she's like, my job is done. I don't want any complaints or lawsuits. I'm leaving. And it's up to Lana, the fake Alexa, to hold the show together. This wafer thin premise has got even thinner. Welcome to Pleasure Island. I hope you guys are ready to embark on a voyage of passion and adventure. Georgia's ass is insane. <laughs> there it is. I hope you guys are going to embark on a voyage of passion and pleasure and learn something. Georgia's ass, oh my god, is insane. Holy shit, that is a fat, big ass. I would love to set up camp and explore that ass for a few days. Goddamn. First of all, it's not even that big. I'm sorry, Georgia. I seem better. Secondly, come on, dude. That's the first thing you're gonna say. I guess it is Pleasure Island, but you can see what we're in for. This is literally the caliber of show we're watching. Like, I really don't know what else to say about it. I want to bite it. Oh hell no, man! What the? All right then. Okay. I get my peaches down in Georgia. Georgia is the girl of my dreams. She is. A goddess. I like how the two were like, Georgia's ass is the biggest thing I ever seen. And Pat's like, she is a goddess from the depths of Hawaii. Where's she from? Australia. From the depths of Australia. And I would love to take her out on a date. What do you like most about a girl? Well, physically? Yeah. I'm an eyes guy. Eyes guy. I can't tell you what eye color one of these girls has. <laughs> really? <laughs> I've been looking at all her asses. <laughs> uh, listen, man, if you're on Pleasure Island, I'm not even mad at Stevan. I, I would do the same thing if I was on Pleasure Island. But I would, I'm I'm an eyes guy too. I'm a, I'm a smile guy. If you have a nice smile, turn around, let me see. 
from behind. I get it. But Stevan really looks more like George's type. I'm assuming she's into bad boys and Pat only gave a goal a flower. I'd love to see how he does because he seems to be a sensitive type. Now, that's the thing. Do girls actually like sensitive types or do they like people like Stevan who looks like he's a, a walking canvas? george has got those green, green eyes with that little bit of red tint, some brown in it. Well, I mean, if you're going for Georgia, all I gotta say is best of luck. So am I. Yeah, best of luck, bro. <laughs> May the best man win. So, Stevan and Patrick, they shake hands and they say may the best man win because they're both going for Georgia. One sees her as a goddess and the other one loves her ass. So that's going to be an interesting battle. It's supposed to be like a bunch of alpha males because there's no betas on this show. This is too hot to handle. You got a bunch of alpha males and they are ready to take everyone down or down or go downtown. Who knows? There seems to be a lot of competition with Georgia. Oh, let the games begin. Oh, I forgot. Harry's also in this. He, he didn't have anybody's hand to shake because nobody even wanted to talk to him. So he's just out there rubbing his hands like, oh, yeah, there's two other people. Let the games begin. I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to say I look like Harry Styles. And then she's going to ask me to sing and then I'm going to run away because I can't. So yeah, Harry's also in it. That's a, that creates a love triangle. And if you include Georgia, it's a square. Not everybody has your eyes. If they're not brown, they're not green. They're like kind of a mixture of both with like oh, some wow. orange thrown in. That's so weird. I didn't like, know that. <laughs> I thought they were just brownies. You know, look in the mirror enough. Awesome. Yes. So, Stefan actually used Patrick's line and pulled it off on Georgia. The funny thing is that Georgia didn't even seem to like it or care. She would have probably, honestly, probably been like, oh, you like my ass? Well, let's, let's get, let's get down to business. The fact that he said that and tried to be sensitive, I think backfired. You could almost see Georgia being like, huh, well, I thought they were just brown. <laughs> I don't look in my eyes either. I just look in my ass. So, <laughs> okay. I just gotta get easy by herself. Make her focus on me. There were a lot of man nips in this show. I try not to focus on them, but every time I stare at it for too long, I'm like, those are some weird nips, man. You better cover them nips up. Oh, I've had my eyes on you. I'm not gonna lie, pretty much this whole time. From the start? So, yeah, from the start. Come here. Over here, it's just turn this way. Oh, so I, I don't get want you to fall off. So meanwhile, um, as usual on these shows, the black contestants have to pair up with each other. I just absolutely love how no matter what day and age we're in, we have this for a show. It's very much like that, except Nathan and Holly are the only couple who vaguely are not bound by the rules of Netflix and society where they only make the black couples go for one another. You'll see it later on. I just think it's really, really weird that they do this on these shows. Even in Love is Blind, no matter what the contestant's skin color is, you mostly have them dating like their own thing. With the ultimatum, the two couples were black. They went to the other couples who were black. It's like, I understand. I'm not saying that you can't do that or that you shouldn't. But isn't it odd that every single show that we have has all of the contestants of color match with the other contestants of color? Is that not a little weird is all I'm saying. But uh, Truth matches with Izzy and then they have a little bond. Yeah. I wear this out. I love this place. You got sexy lips. Can I see? So yeah, Truth and Izzy share a nice passionate kiss and then uh, Stefan looks at them like a perv and then he looks at Georgia and he's like, man, we gotta have, we, we gotta have like some monk or something. They just kiss. Oh, it's so romantic. How could you not? I can't believe that. We're gonna one-up it. <laughs> we're gonna fix that. Okay, Georgia, my goal, it's not romantic if within the first hour you meet someone and kiss them. That's just slutty behavior, okay? And for a guy, that's just, that's truth. I don't know if anything on the show can be classified as romantic as it can be pedantic and very, very fast. If love is blind is fast, seeing the contestants get married, this show goes at hyperspeed. Get this straight. We've got a love triangle with Jazz, Izzy, and Truth. Oh, I guess this proves my point, doesn't it? I had no idea Jazz was even in love with Truth, but apparently the love triangle is three black contestants, which is just. You're telling me out of every contestant, none of them said Truth was good. I really like Truth. Only the only the black people. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying, I know for a fact beyond the show, a lot of the producers and production in shows that are reality TV, they actually have scripts and they tell you things like who to try for, who to date, this or that, or what would cause reality or drama. And the fact that they're still doing this is just really kind of icky. I think you can definitely go beyond those bounds and you can date anyone. That's the point of the show. And it would probably do better if the contestants had anyone instead of just staying within their, how do you say it? Colors? Oh God. God, that's so disgusting to even say. Yeah, there's a love triangle. Later, and if you don't believe me or you think I'm being a bit like overdramatic, later on you will see another contestant comes in who's who's black and the same thing happens. And a love square with Steven, Patrick, Harry, and Georgia. Oh yeah, it's like I said, a love square. Damn, I guess geometry can be sexy. 
Since the first moment I saw you, I thought you're the, the one of the most beautiful girls I've ever seen. Patrick looks like he perpetually comes out of the water every day. His hair is always wet, but then he picks another flower for Georgia and in a moment of just them alone, he confesses to her her beauty. And Patrick, like I said, is a sensitive soul. He talks in poetic demeanor. He's like E.E. E. Cummings and hopefully he will be E.E. E. Cummings later on. Right now, he's just trying to, you know, seduce her with flowers. I guess it's good, but he keeps using the same moves. So I don't know, man. So I picked you this flower. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. It's amazing. It's so cute. I think all the bushes are empty. There's no flowers left. <laughs> That's a good one. I don't get That's a good one. He just keeps picking flowers for every girl. He's like, here, a tulip for you. Here, an orchid for you. You bitch, you're awkward. What is it? Oh, an orchid, sorry. I'm sorry. For you, for you. Oh, this, is a, uh, this is a dead flower because you're dead to me. Uh, and you, uh, a sunflower because you're my son. <laughs> <laughs> I think she wants me. Might be able to fall in love with this girl. I would love to just kiss her romantically on the beach. That's that's really true, bro. But like, I just want to say, you can't just give people flowers and be like, I think she loves me. If she accepts it. That was firstly, the jankiest looking flower. The flower looked like a sorry excuse for a flower. Secondly, you can see her reaction. It was a look of like, oh, I guess, thank you. I have to be on this show. It wasn't a look of, damn, I want to bang you. If someone wants to, Patrick, you'll know it. You'll know it. She would have thrown the flower away and been like, shh. Give me something else, Patrick. I'm looking at that D. She would have said something else. So I don't think she wants you, Patrick. I think you need to come up with a better system or maybe have some game other than just picking up flowers and other various things to give to people. So this is the first day that the contestants think that they're on Pleasure Island and they get to do all of the stuff that they would, which is basically touch each other in inappropriate ways. I don't know how you could be so gullible as to think this is actually a show, but they let this go on for a short period of time before actually telling them they're on Too Hot to Handle and the contestants react like they've been taken to Guantanamo Bay. I'm gonna mark <laughs> Doris and Derek so you can lick it. You can grab the person and kiss them if you really want. Come and get it. All right, so that lady, what's her name? Bo. She marks two X's on her titties and then she's like, ah, come get it, come get it, bro. Like it's uh, some sort of buffet. And they get it, they get it. Stefan gets it and this is just wild TV. It's wildly inappropriate. Wow. I kiss and motorboated Bo. You know, maybe make Georgia feel a little jealous. Yeah, I wasn't gonna say it, but he did. Yeah, he motorboated. Ah, <laughs> oh, I hate my fucking life. Um, yeah, this is this is the show. Imagine 10, 10 episodes of actually the show. This is like for people who don't want to watch a porno, but also don't want to watch something that's worthwhile. It's when you are stuck in the interim of content and you're just an idiot. That's who that's appealed to. But yeah, this like I said, this goes on for some time. A lot of the contestants just do this weird thing that you would do when you're drunk and at a party with other people. So oh, here we go. Starting positions, please. So then Georgia um, marks the spot. Three guys, one after the other, give her that sweet, sweet loving. Oh, oh my God! Three's my lucky number, my bad. Oh. I don't know, man. I don't know how I'd feel, Stefan, if I if I had two of my friends immediately kiss the girl that I'm going to kiss. I might as well turn to my homie and be like, you tongue me. At this point, this is just a big giant orgy that's waiting to happen. And I don't know how close I am with my friends, but I know I'm not that close. My guy best friends are guy best friends because they keep their clothes on. As soon as that comes off, so does the friendship. I, I, I'm sorry, man. I just I can't be that close with some people. Damn, girl. Can I... I will be doing a lot of bad things tonight. Uh, in between that, the black contestants finally get a chance to do their things. They obviously do it second because this is the type of show this is. Truth then, you know, does some stuff with Jazz and Izzy looks on like, oh my god, how could you possibly do this? Which is just mind boggling because the show is supposed to be called Pleasure Island and she's getting jealous that a guy she met that day is taking pleasure in someone else. Even on a show that is made for people to bang other people, they have contestant girls getting jealous. It is, it is just unbelievable. My best feature is... So then she marks two X's on her ass cheeks and then Truth is like, yeah, I want some of that. So then he just double dips, which makes Jasmine jealous. 
So again, on a show called Pleasure Island, in which it's supposed to be no strings attached and everybody's only supposed to have fun. In fact, I remember Izzy saying she ha she ran through a team of rugby players and Jazz saying she has different dick appointments. Both of them are jealous. The, dick of the, the double standard is amazing. The boy claimed his territory. Nobody wants to sit there and watch like the guy that they're interested in kiss someone else. Bruh. You, you have got to check yourself before you wreck yourself, okay? I just cannot believe you will say this on the show. If you wanted to go to a show where your man and you are sustaining a relationship, maybe try Love is Blind. Actually, that's a surefire way to get divorced, but maybe try a different show. Hello, my beautiful buccaneers. Are you guys having a good time? We call them buccaneers. Who's gonna go up there and bring back that booty? It's gonna be something big. So then the uh, host comes up. I fully forgot her name. I'm just gonna call her Sizzle Slaw. Sizzle, Sizzler, yep. Sizzler comes up and then uh, she says there's a bunch of booty to grab, but she doesn't mean ass, she means an actual pirate chest, and the guys bring it down only to find out they've been tricked. In the box is fake Alexa, whose name is Lana. On this island, there cannot be pleasure without pain. This is too hot to handle. I'm so sorry, you guys. Yep. So then Lana pulls the rug from under everyone and says, you've been specially selected. Even though the truth is they signed up and signed the forms because nobody else would do this shitty show. She also says that they have meaningless sex as if it's a problem in this day and age. But I guess the show is trying to teach us a lesson that vapid, vapid, meaningless relationships only fall second to falling in love. It's supposed to be a good message, and I would actually appreciate it if the show prioritized it at all, but it doesn't. This is just a cheap, cheap trick. I wanna go home. Because you are all choosing meaningless sex over genuine relationships. You must abstain from sexual practices for the entirety of your stay. Yeah, but how long is the stay? Like, stuff like this is important because it feels like the stay is only a week or something. The way that this time moves in this show, you'd think that the contestants are there for months and they'll be like, I met you three days ago, but I can definitely say I'm in love with you. It's like love is blind on steroids. <sighs> yes. I've done steroids and created this show. No kissing, no heavy petting, and no sex of any kind. Yeah, Holly, you can't. You better close that mouth because sex of that kind is wrong too. Put, you better buckle those lips up, Holly. I've increased the prize fund to two hundred thousand dollars. Each time the rules are broken, money will be deducted from the prize fund. So basically what they're saying is if you could be self-disciplined enough to last for probably a week, maybe, maybe two, then you, someone is going to win $200,000 or they could all split it. However they choose to spend their prize money is up to them. But if you could just go two weeks without being a delinquent, you'd be fine. It's the easiest self-discipline test in the world. This is not a hard thing to do. But for people like this, the challenge will prove almost impossible. $200,000 is life changing. This game is so serious now. I get, by the way, I'm, I don't mean to flex on you, Harry, but $200,000 is not life changing. I can tell you that. It's, it's at best something that you need to invest to then have it life changing. But I don't suppose financial prowess is something with these guys. If you're flying around the world to have sex with people, I don't think your financial literacy is at the top of its game. Welcome to your long, hard, sexless summer when a rule break i'm gonna rule break i don't care about the money i want to have fun with all these people ah see here's another problem of the show they got contestants who are entitled i don't suppose it's too much of a stretch to think that some of these girls might or potentially could have had or at least have the option to have sugar daddies maybe a lot of them money isn't as much of a priority because they can find guys who get the money but for the guys on the show all of them are like oh my god that's so much money so maybe they should have found contestants contestants who all have the same goal in mind and feel like oh man we better not lose the money that would make the show at least more suspenseful but most if not all of the girls on the show are like yeah oops we're losing money oops how do i know this because on the first episode after the rules are established georgia and izzy the two contestants who said they don't care about breaking the rules break the rules by kissing each other should we just do it I ain't got no It's a bad situation. Just go with what you feel, man. I like how this show is supposed to suspend our disbelief in terms of how would people know if they actually broke the rules and some of the contestants are like, oh, they caught us doing that? When they 
always have a mic strapped up to them. Those black things are called lavalier mics, and they're always strapped 24-7, meaning the audio is being picked up and fed to the crew and team for them to edit. You just can't suspend your disbelief and think that these people don't think that there's any cameras on a show that's putting them up to stay at a place for free. It just doesn't make any sense to me that they're supposed to think that nobody's watching them. The whole point of the show is to have cameras on them 24-7. That's what reality TV is. I'm very surprised that anybody watched the show. This is where I want to be. I run with me then. <laughs> Love that. I'm gonna go over here. Sorry, Jazz. So everyone at night gets to sleep on a bed. They get to sleep with each other because there's only five beds, I think. And usually I've noticed that the girl who doesn't get the person they want sleeps with Patrick. If Georgia were a flower, she'd be a lily. She smells beautiful. She only blooms at night. What? Oh my god. Dude, can you not talk in flower references your whole life? If Georgia was a flower, she, she'd be an acorn because because she's like the singer. If Georgia was another flower, I, I guess she'd be a leaf because I would never want to leave her alone. I want to be the thorn in her ass. I just really like this woman and I'm making flowers references until she marries me. That's right, Stevan. Honesty is the best policy. Not anything to say about last night. Last night, you were given strict rules Progressively. Every time that sound is made, that dun -dun -dun, an angel throws its wings away and then jumps off a cliff. Just nine minutes later, there was a breach. You guys have absolutely zero self-control. They didn't even say how much money they were losing, but the rules were established that you lose money. Imagine being so privileged that you could stand to win $200,000 if you just don't do anything sexual for like a week. And within nine minutes, you're like, nah, I don't care. $200,000. All you have to do is abstain. Dude, I'll be the most abstinent person if I would. I'd use that $200,000 after to go to a strip club. Fine. I can wait. This breach of the rules has cost the group three dollars. Nah, <laughs> I messed up. I was just, I was just fucking, it's three thousand dollars. But imagine if they lost three dollars and they reacted like that. Yo, somebody is lying so badly right now. Okay, I just want to put this into perspective. So a Zynga burger from KFC is $10. $3,000 will get you 300 Zynga burgers. You just lost 300 Zynga burgers. You're pretty much dead to me. Georgia! Georgia! Okay, it was me. So they find out Georgia's done it with Izzy. Well, they don't find out who it is with yet, but when they find out it's with Izzy, most of the guys are like, I ain't even mad, that's hot. For $3,000, it's not that hot, man. It's really not that hot. Who else? I can't say. There's me. Oh! I can't be that mad, that's hot. It just took so long for you girls just to fess up. I get that. Ah, this is my boy, Patrick. Finally, the only rational person in this whole show who's like, listen guys, I know you guys kissed, but really, you just took really long to fess up and I don't really like that as a person. I'm really not about that kind of life. You're lying. That type of lie is like something criminals do. Like... <laughs> this is the type of lies that criminals do, you know? They get arrested, they go to jail forever. They get the chair. This is the type of lie that criminals get the chair for. None. I feel like you guys just broke the way. I was just waiting for someone to do it first. So that is the first day they've already lost $3,000. The prize pool is only up to $197,000. That's $3,000 less than the $200,000 we started with. But we start at the first workshop today. And there is another character that I really like. I don't know his name, but he's a sex therapist. First workshop ready for you. I specialize in sexual energy mastery. See, that's not even a thing. And he does it. I don't know who this guy is. I forgot his name. I'm just going to call him sexual mastery guy. How did he discover this job? I don't know. But he does live in California. So just know that when you live in California, anything is his job. If you can think it, you can probably make it a business there. So this guy has been practicing that for a long time. I don't know how, but he's done that. Breath is a huge thing. So when you feel sexual tension, step away and go do your breathing. A lot of people don't generally breathe enough. Can we have that as a quote? Patrick, a lot of people don't generally breathe enough. But I do for sure. Ah, uh, that's, the, that's the full quote. A lot of people generally don't breathe enough, but I do for sure. Patrick. Honestly, he has the IQ of Patrick from SpongeBob. Honestly. I've done a lot of breath work myself like how to hold an orgasm or get the sexual tension going. And you can hold orgasms for about 45 minutes. Oh wow. I thought I was learning a class from the teacher, but now I'm learning from Patrick on how to hold an orgasm. I would love to actually put one on a hold for later because maybe I'm not feeling too good. Maybe lay away, maybe get laid away. I don't know, something like that, Patrick. Can you teach me about that? 
wow. Yeah, even even the dude was like, wow. I thought I was teaching this class. Turns out I'm the student. Oh my God. Big deep breath. Connect with them on a deeper level. So then uh, the sexual mastery guy teaches them how to be in positions that are loving, like doggy style, reverse cowgirl, and uh, many other positions that are just very loving and stuff that you can do with your family and other people to just understand that this is something that you love and you're mastering your energy of sexuality. A really good course that we have here. Take deep breaths together. Just see what's coming up. A lot. You and Izzy had your like. I feel Izzy that way. I never did this with yeah. So it's like. While they're doing the workshop, Truth Guy and Jazz paired together, and she takes this time to ask him about Izzy. And he says, I don't really feel that way about her. Like, I never felt that way about her. As if he's known Jazz for more than like a day now. Man, ever since I met you yesterday, I've been feeling like different about myself, you know? I'm the truth. I never tell a lie, and I feel different about you. Maybe I could see myself starting a future with you. So he says that to Jazz, and she's like, oh, I believe that. How did I feel? I was actually attracted to somebody else here, you know, and it was more sexual. And when I feel like we have something genuine over here. And even, even when a sexual man comes and asks truth, like what he feels, he's like, yeah, man, I was like more attracted to someone like, you know, you know, more like sexually, but like, I feel what we have here is deeper, which is the biggest insult to both of these two. Because firstly, Izzy is just sitting there like, damn, what is that about? And secondly, Jazz should be like, damn, I'm not as attractive as her. He just found a way to insult both people. What an idiot. Meanwhile, back at the crib, a machine gun Kelly stunt double and Jason and Momoa stunt double are having a conversation. So how do you feel about um, Izzy and Georgia breaking the rules? I just wanted to watch it if I could have, you know what I mean? <laughs> Me too, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a weird convo. Patrick is now like surveying other people. He's like, how do you feel about the kiss that happened yesterday that lost us $3,000? How do you feel about it? And uh, Stevan is like, yeah, I feel good. Which leads Patrick to audibly laugh with his tongue out, which I've never seen before. I've never seen someone laugh and be like, <laughs> Country boy, I love you. That is different. That is a new breed of uh, weird. Do you guys do that? Does, do you know anybody who laughs with their tongue out? So, someone, can you tell me down below? <laughs> I might have seen it once on a show. I didn't think it was real. I just, I kind of lost trust in her after that. Like, honestly, bro, like, I genuinely want to make a connection with somebody. But right now, I just really don't see it. Damn. So Patrick then comes through a whole full circle. He realizes that I don't want to be attracted to someone who lies. I ain't trying to do that. And he also says that he wants to create a genuine attraction on the show, which is kind of nice. I really, I'm rooting for Patrick at this point. He says some weird things, but I like that about him. He's a real person. And maybe that might just bite him in the butt, but still, he's sticking to his guns. Or his flowers, sorry. Really? Yeah, bro. I'm just around. Oh, never mind. Oh, Jesus Christ, I just... Wow, everything I said, you could just erase that. <laughs> Patrick's a new douchebag. <laughs> you seem like you're having a good time with Jazz. I had a great time, yeah. Meanwhile, at night, Truth gets confronted by Izzy about what he said earlier on about how she's only sexually attractive to him, but nothing else. I didn't choose my partner, you know? You know if I had to choose, it would have been you. Oh my god, he's doing the play, he's doing player tactics. Y'all man, like, I don't even choose my partner. If I had to choose, it'd be like, it'd be you. That's, that's what players do. They sound like drunk people who can't actually stand straight and their, their heads always go from this side to this side, like you're Stevie Wonder. And a lot of smiling and then a lot of like lip biting, so you're like nervous, awkward, horny, and constipated at the same time. And if you do that, you get a player. Man, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I didn't, I didn't choose my partner, but like, it's you. I was into it with Jazz, yeah, but I was definitely looking at y'all. I would have had a better time with you. I'm sitting here telling you, like, I genuinely want to get to know you. I'm not, gee, I'm not telling this to Jazz. Damn, so then he pulls out the card where Jazz is not there and he's like, yeah, man, like, I just want to get to know you better. That's what I was really trying to say when I said that, like, you know, I had a better connection with Jazz. What I was really trying to say is that, like, I was trying to get to know you better. And Izzy's so dumb, she believes this. Girl. Stand up for yourself. I've told Jazz, I've had my eye on her, but Izzy's my number one. Oh, I know what boys are like, but he's saying the right things and he is fit. I want Izzy. 
Fit is English for like sexy. You're really fit, mate. Bird is English for girl. A fit bird is not just a bird that lifts weights. It's a sexy girl. I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah. So Izzy is apparently, even though she knows guys are like this, she still wants to give Truth another chance. Which kind of also leads me to think it's really sad that Izzy knows this is how guys are. And probably everyone on the show, every girl does want a genuine connection. They just haven't found guys who treat them right. So they, they're probably doing this. It, it just makes it seem really sad because I think at that moment when I saw Izzy saying that I was like maybe if she had like a very very lovely loving person she wouldn't resort to this unfortunately she's just put herself in a position where people are like oh this is what Izzy's like so I can't be with her it's like a bad loop that she's going in. so I kind of felt sorry for her in that moment I, I don't think she's a bad person I think she's pretty cool I got a little surprise I want to show you. But uh, anyway, Izzy and Truth break the rules, so that's another $3,000. 600 Zingle Bogus down the drain because of you two and another two. Oh my God. Izzy's responsible for the death of 600 Zingle Bogus. Really? Yeah, over here, yeah. It's named Dear Georgia. While they're doing that, Patrick takes out his guitar, goes to Georgia, and tries to serenade her. Uh, and by serenade, I mean he tortures her with every possible fiber in his body. When I saw your face, I knew it was. By the way, I did a little editing on it to make it sound, you know, a bit wonky with his singing. I did that to try and make it sound better because the original's worse. So, sorry. A big race to kiss you because I have wished. You're the one now sleeping right next to me. Wow, what is going on? Yeah, no, honestly, he's playing one chord, smacking that guitar and just making up words. Hey, you're a fat lady, but you drive me crazy. And if you were thin, I'd make you my wife again. And you're pretty cute. And I treat you right every single night. I massage your feet. <laughs> Looks so stunning in that dress too. Oh wow, he even he did a shout out as if there's many other people. <laughs> Trying to make my balls blue. <laughs> and here you are looking so beautiful like you always do. Cause I wish I had Oh he's still gone. Oh my god. Oh Jesus, the thing about the balls, the balls blue comment. That came out of nowhere. Patrick, you have a career in comedy and not singing. <laughs> I would kiss you right now, but Lana put all these rules out and I can't, so. I'm just secretly thinking that works really well for me. Obviously, you are the most beautiful person in this house. Yeah, so that was Patrick's display of affection. He sings to people and that is his mating technique. That, that was like, all I was thinking when he sung that was Adam Sandler is a better guitarist and singer than him. I guess I can fart on the couch now, but baby, it's just not the same. And if, if that's the barometer that you're going to, dude, you got to figure out different techniques. Figure out something else with the flower in the hair and the guitar. Maybe slam the guitar on the girl's head so she passes out. And when she wakes up, you can nurse her back to health. And she'll actually be like, thank you. That way I didn't have to hear you sing. Maybe that'll get them attracted to you. I don't know. But after that display, Georgia goes away. And Stevan is like, I'm going to make my move because this is the easiest time. After Patrick basically broke you down, uh, I'm going to try and get with you. Seeing you with somebody else... It's not fun for me. I don't want to be spending these workshops with anybody else. That's so cute. I'm gonna do one more thing. You look awfully good on me. So then Stevan kisses Georgia and says, I don't want to see you with anyone else and professes the fact that he might actually get jealous. She says it's very cute and they kiss, losing 300 more Zingaburgers. We've lost 900 Zingaburgers. That is a lot of Zingaburgers lost. Oh, you can't see that. It's like we could have done way more. You didn't have to cut me off. Yeah, and then Nathan and Holly also kiss, making it 1,200 Zigglemburgers. So that was day one, I'm assuming. Uh, and so many people broke the rules that night. The next morning, Jazz is a bit annoyed about Truth and um, Izzy. I was really annoyed that Truth and Izzy shared a bed. There has been a breach. All right, I mean, I'll, I'll be real with you right now, actually. I definitely lost you guys some money. Oh, you can see Patrick's face. I definitely lost you guys some money. Patrick's like, what? I sang to this girl, I said I loved her, and I said I won't, I'm not gonna kiss her, and you lost me money? I'm surprised Patrick didn't turn into Patrick Bateman. I pulled Georgia aside and I kissed her. 
Oh my God. <laughs> you don't even know how Patrick's reacting. Like, is it because it's Georgia or is it because it's losing money? Ugh, fuck. Dude, I could have used that money to buy a more in tune guitar. My guitar is out of tune. I definitely felt a genuine connection. Stevan is like expressing his feelings with everyone. Like, I, I just don't like people being like that with me. I get really like, yeah. Yes. Yep. When a girl said, when you say that you like uh, expressing feelings about a girl and you're like, yo, I really like her, and she's like, yep. Yep. Pretty good. Yep. Pretty good. Everything's good on my end. I think I'm just doing fine. Thank you very much. No, I don't want no kisses. I just want to go back to the farmyard and check on my flowers. Then you know you got something. You, you fed up. Georgia does, doesn't like it when guys do anything more than sensual stuff to her. Whenever they try and be romantic and try and be her man, she's automatically put off by this, which is just very problematic as a human. Beyond toxic, in my opinion. Someone that I just I think is not my cup of tea personally, but Stevan has to be like, oh, okay, the minute I get too into you, you hate me. This is why bad boys exist, because every time they try and be nice and have feelings, girls like this are like, mm -mm. I liked it better when you hated me. I can guarantee right now, if Stevan just leaves her alone, shows attention to everyone else, she'd be like, why? Why aren't you paying attention to me? I hate that that is the outcome that Georgia is putting on people. There was another breach of the rules. Okay, to be fair, we, we had a kiss by the pool. What's a few times? Like five. Y'all have five kisses. Does it count if you have multiple kisses or is it just grouped into one? I need to know the bundle, like the rules. Is it a bundle up? Do you get paid less? Do, is there more? If you guys had that genuine connection, like what would you do? Genuine connection? You've been known? I'm sorry, this is the first night. This is the first night. You, what's her last name? Huh? I bet you if you asked Nathan what her last name is, he'd be like, Holly White? And she'd be like, Nathan... Africa? There was another breach of the rules. Oh, I kissed Daisy yesterday. Crazy! I mean, I'm a little confused about that. We had our thing at the workshop. So then Truth explains that he kissed Izzy yesterday, and Jasmine is not really worried about the money. She's more worried about the fact that he kissed another girl, even though nobody's dating anybody on this show. So I'm like a little pissed off about that. You said to me that you said to her that you wanted to do things with me and not her. I yeah, that's the face that I'm making right now, Georgia. You said to me that you said to her that you want- Yeah, when a player gets caught between two two people and has to explain himself, it's always quite a sight to see. I never told you I completely shut Jazz down. That is not it's what always... you said last night. I just don't like being lied to, so it's just like- I mean, I never lied to you, and I never lied to you. Hey, my name's Truth. I never lied to you. I just said that you were sexy and that I, I, I don't feel the same way with Izzy. And I never lied to you. I just said that I want to explore with you more and that you my number one. I didn't lie to either of them. I just said that I want to have sex with them at the opportune time. It's not lying. It's called not truthing. But that's my name, truth. Sometimes I don't do it. I mean, I just feel like it's got a bit dead now. It's obviously not working. All of these rule breaks in such a short period have made me reassess my retreat. The fines will now be doubled. Holy crap. So every time they kiss, it used to be $3,000 lost. Now it's 6000 Stevan and George's kiss has cost the group 6000 do you know how good a kiss it has to be for six thousand dollars? I'm gonna I expect not only uh, France to be in my mouth. I need more than French I need some gold honestly for six thousand dollars for a kiss. Oh my god You better be the greatest kiss of all time. Izzy and Truth have cost the group six thousand dollars Nathan and Holly have cost the group thirty thousand dollars for five kisses? $30,000. Is there not a sale on that? Do you not get like, you know, buy two, get one free, kiss two, get two free, something like that? $30,000. What are we up to? That's $42,000 minus what we already had. I can't. I don't know, man. I can't. I would absolutely, from this point on, if I was them, I would not even touch each other. I'd just stay on my side of the bed and be like, hello. Hi, Holly. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fine. No, 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 that is my penis. Do not look at it. I think I'll just go for a walk today. Hi, Patrick. How are you? I can not I can stay away from someone for $30,000. I'm telling you. Someone I just met, who I didn't know the day before, who could lose me $30,000. Mm -mm. I don't know how you could possibly do this and be okay with that. We're broke. Let's go home. We're not broke. We're not broke. Georgia, 30000 minus 200000 is not zero. We're not broke, but we've lost a lot of money. The rule breaks have cost the group $42,000. The prize fund now stands at 155 
thousand dollars. So essentially, they've lost forty-five thousand dollars since being there after one day. This is this is a group of people who can lose money faster than they can make it. We've literally lost more in one night than I could have earned in years. Years. It takes you more than one year to earn $45,000. I don't mean to be rude, Jazz, but maybe you shouldn't be on a show like this. Maybe you should be fucking applying to be at McDonald's or some shit because $45,000 in years. It, Jazz, you need to be, you need to, you need to get some sorted, man. You, instead of making dick appointments, you need to make appointments with businesses and other places that will accept you for work so you can get money. That way you won't need to make dick appointments. Bro, I wasn't expecting 30,000, bro. That's... Honestly, I'll t imagine what you can do with that sort of money. I'll tell you how much you could do with that money. You could buy 1,000 Zinger Burgers. 10,000 Zinger Burgers would be 300,000. There's no way you'll ever do that. 1,000 Zinger Burgers. That's a lot. We barely cuddled last night. I was so tired. So as soon as I got like in my perfect position, I just fell asleep. Well, in honesty, are you still interested in me? Yeah. The next day, everyone gets on with their life. Stefan then confronts his partner, or uh, bed partner, Georgia, about the fact that she's been sleeping very, very much away from him and says that he just wanted to cuddle. Because Stefan, for all his bad boy tendencies, is just a man who wants to be loved. But Georgia is just a woman who doesn't want to love men. She doesn't really explain to him that she wants to just be friends and she thinks it's a bit too much that he's coming on too strong. I can actually understand the fact that Georgia might be a bit too hesitant to be too clingy to someone after just a day. But at the same time, it is like kind of sweet. I'm assuming that Stefan wants to be like, ah, I really like you. I don't want to be with anyone else on the show. So I'm not sure where to go with that. My guests are struggling to form meaningful connections that could lead to long-term relationships. In order to address this problem, the dynamic of the group needs to change. Well, if you wanted to actually address those problems and honestly be a show that helped create genuine and meaningful relationships, you could start by not having every contestant in a G-string or short pants with their ding-dongs hanging out. Maybe that would be the way to start. You know what I mean? If this was really the show that you wanted, maybe you could try harder than that. It just is a show where you want contestants to be stupid. You just want people to lose money and then people to laugh at them. We can call it what it is. This is Survivor for Idiots. I need to increase your chances of finding meaningful romantic relationships. What the earth is going on? What? <laughs> Harry is like, what the earth is going on? I'm sorry, Harry, do you mean what on earth? No, what the mother earth is going on? What the mother nature is going on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on, Harry. They've run out of contestants. So they're bringing in two new contestants. Every episode or two, the show introduces new rules and new things. And while I do appreciate the fact that the rules constantly change, it just shows you how wafer thin this plot of the show is, that they constantly need to reintroduce things to keep the audience's attention. Because the show's so vapid, the premise itself can't actually hold the show. They need to keep introducing more and more things just so people don't click away from it which like i said just goes to show how badly the show is written produced and even done i have invited two new guests to the retreat my guests have selected one person each to take on a date so now the guests that come on are two new contestants that are sharing the money. They also have selected people to take on dates, which is kind of creepy that the other people can't really say no to the dates, but apparently that's what happens. All you ladies better watch out because I'm here to shake things up. I think I'm a 10 out of 10. I mean, not to toot my own horn, but... <laughs> if I see it, I like it, I'm gonna go get it. Yeah, so we get another contestant, a fan favorite of mine personally, Obi from Canada, Toronto. He sounds like a goofball and he looks a little bit, just a little bit like a uh, uh, donkey from Shrek. I was, I was just saying, uh, it's the goatee that does it for me. So every time he smiles, I'm like, ah, oh, he's gonna say, are we there yet? He's also just a ball of like happiness. I wish he was on the show from the start because I find him very, very funny. I think he's cool. He, he's got that Toronto accent and is really goofy. I think I'm a 10 out of 10. I'm pretty good with the ladies. Oh, woo. I'm Olga, I'm seductive, I'm passionate, fun, ditzy as well. The other girl they get is Olga, who's uh, sort of like Bo. She's also blonde, a bit ditzy. Really, honestly, the most forgettable person on the show. I forgot she existed. The only thing I like about her is the fact that her name's Olga, and I think that's a hilarious name. So if you're named Olga, funny name. I appreciate you. Extremely gullible. 
but in a cute way, I say, I don't stick to any rules. If I want that guy, then I'm gonna get that guy. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. So wait, I'm sorry. Do these contestants uh, not get to uh, bang each other? You know what I'm saying? Like Obi and Olga came together. Throughout the show, they are never seen in any way, shape or form, even interacting with each other on a level other than friendship. Is it if you go on a boat with someone, that's now your like sister for the show? Oh, that's weird. So Obi can't get with Olga now. That's crazy. I've actually selected Jazz. Oh, big surprise. Obi selects the black contestant. That's just fantastic. You see what I mean? This is just lovely. Nathan. I can't resist this anymore. I can never say no to a date. I mean, if he absolutely didn't want to go, he could refuse a date, and he didn't. It's a great date in Pleasure Island. So then Olga also chooses Nathan, which causes Holly to be jealous because that's her man ever since she met him two days ago. Nathan's like, well, I'm still a single man, which he completely is. But the fact that this has only been happening for two days and girls on the show are jealous and possessive and also guys on the show are jealous and want to cuddle and create relationships just goes to show how broken these people are in terms of relationships and how to go about maneuvering them. This is just a bunch of people who need to get into healthy relationships to figure out what they want in life. Yes, it's completely okay to uh, live a life where you're dating and just having casual sex and stuff. There is nothing wrong with that. I don't even think it's you could be judgmental about it. However, you still should have the idea of what a healthy relationship is in case you should want to get into one. Because I think at the end of the day, once you're done with that phase, everybody does want to be loved by someone genuinely and truly. So these people need that help which they're not getting on the show. But anyway, Nathan goes out on the date with Olga. Holly and I have had something going great, but I've only known her for a couple of days. That's what I mean, that's what I mean. Holly and I are going with, yo man, she's like my soulmate and I love her so much, but I've only known her for two days. Do you know what her favorite color is? Black. <laughs> I can tell you that, mate. You spent a couple of days with Holly, but like, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean I can't get to know what you're about. But if it takes just one girl to show up at the villa and his head's turn, like, yeah. it's, it's really gonna rub me the wrong way. So yeah, then Holly, like I said, is just going a bit crazy. She's like, man, two days in, this is my man. I need usually like dogs. I just, if I pee on it, it's mine. So I've done that. And uh, for some reason, he's still gone out and been on a date. So maybe I need to take measures into my own hands. Like, I feel like this is one of the first times in a long Long time that I'm like open to like love. It's been two days, woman. It's been two days. I don't want to ruin your expectation of what love is, but this is lust or you thinking that this is love. I just cannot believe the first interaction you had with this man is you licked his abs. That's not love. That's a hundred percent lust. It's like going to McDonald's when you're hungry at 3 a.m. It's not good food. It's fucking convenient. It's different. Lana, please. <gasps> I like this boy. I definitely get the Beyonce vibes from you yeah. for sure. From you. So. <laughs> what kind of uh, relationships have you been in? Meanwhile, Obi takes Jazz on a date, and uh, Jazz has been wanting a different person on the show ever since Truth has like f***ed her over, and she finally gets a good guy in Obi. I just don't see what is wrong with Obi. He's a good-looking dude. He's hilarious, unintentionally, albeit. He seems to be a nice, positive energy type human. But everybody on the show friend zones this man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to spoil it, but literally everyone on the show is like, "Nice one, Obi. You're a good friend." I don't know why. We do have like another guest. Her name is Lana. <gasps> We're actually on a too hot to handle. What the? Oh man, Obi's really taking this hot. He's like, damn, this is worse than prison for me. Not having sex. Oh, I can't do that. This is gonna be a really tough thing. The way that he reacted was like someone said, you're, you're convicted of murder, Obi. And he's like, oh no, bro. Oh, this can't be me. This can't be life, my guy. I vibe with you and who you are mentally. When I want something, I take it. Obviously, I am interested in you. Moving forward, I just think we just need to be a little more open and honest in the moment with things. So as the dates go on at nighttime, Stefan confronts Georgia and says, I think we need to be a little more honest with each other mentally. I'm very much into you. Your last name is Georgia Australia, obviously, uh, because I've only known you for two days, but I mentally really connect with you. We've talked about very, very deep things philosophically, like how big you like your penis size to be. And also I've talked about philosophical things like if I put it in the butt or not, you know? So we've really, really connected over many things. We've bonded, we've had bondage. It's been a lot of good stuff. I think I think we should move on to the next part of our relationship. I just don't want you to have an expectation here and, and me to be delivering here. Yeah, sure, I'll get to know other people and I'm not gonna sit around and put all the- um... Eggs in one basket. Right. Stefan then gets told that uh, he's being friend zoned by Georgia, which is somewhat sad. Like I said, on one hand, 
weekend, it's two days. So Stefan saying all the stuff about mentally being into her is totally unwarranted. But at the same time, him actually trying to settle down or be like, yeah, I was a bad boy, but I really only like you is, is a bit... I guess it's a bit cute on a show like this. This is as committed as a lot of people will get. And Georgia's hesitancy is is a little concerning. How every time someone gets too close to her, she'll be like, nope. But they friend zone each other. Well, Georgia friend zones Stefan. And now MGK stunt double is sad. <laughs> Did you just pound me out? <laughs> Yeah, oh my god. Wow. Whenever a girl really doesn't like you, she'll start doing things like call you bro. And at the end of it, it's like... She gave him a fist bump. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever have you ever had sex with someone and fist bumped them? Exactly. That's it. That's the kiss of death right there. Stefan is not getting any for the rest of his life from Georgia. Good riddance, Stefan. I'm sorry, man. Maybe it was the man bun. What's the situation then? Like, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling good. I'm happy. I need a chat with Nathan. Olga, she's got great chats. Sweet girl. So after the date, Nathan and Olga come back and Holly starts chatting with Nathan about the date, trying to really assess where he's at. And uh, Nathan does the right thing. He's like, listen, man, Olga's got a nice fat ass, but you, you're the real girl I want. Ever since I met you two days ago, I've wanted to marry you, probably. Maybe not. But I really think that you and me can have a decent relationship for like a week. The day really made me realize how much I really fancy Holly. I don't think there's anybody else that could walk in here and turn my head at all. I don't think you want to stay. <laughs> but Nathan says the right thing, I guess. He's like, you know, nobody could turn my head. You're the goal for me in the show and i'm assuming it's a cute moments i don't know how cute it's supposed to be knowing each other for two days like i really just don't buy any of this but anyway so we sleep so, you me oh <laughs> Yeah, there's a little scene where Obi asks Jazz who she's sleeping with, and she's like, eh, maybe you, and he's like, ooh! <laughs> he's way too happy. I, I wish this dude was there since day one. He's such a ball of energy, and he's such a goofy, goofy person. Hold up, is that Izzy in bed with Obi? Oh, yeah, what the fuck? Oh, you see I went from Izzy and Jazz to no girls. No jizzy. Did he say no jizzing? What? I went from Izzy and like <laughs> jazz to like no girls. No jizzing tonight. Ah, oh, damn. I'ma catch a flight. Ah, oh, damn. I wanted to get a wife. Ah, oh, damn. Or maybe even have a one night. He sounds like Drake, who's about to rap, but also that he's about to cry. All right. I say, uh, no jizzing. Whenever he talks. I don't know if I like his voice. I absolutely hate it. I think I, I think I hate it. That night, Nathan and Holly decide to try and break the rules in a very scandalous manner. She decides to put underwear on his face and then kiss him through it, thinking that would be a good tactic. Last night, when I was asleep, I heard someone moan. Oh, you can touch me, you can touch me. I was like, what? what? See, and yeah, I told you every person who wants to sleep with someone but doesn't get a partner ends up with Patrick. Olga and Patrick are now sleeping in the same bed. I don't even think Olga knows his name. She probably thinks that this is the help from the show, and she's like, all right, I'll just put my butt in here. You don't touch me, all right? All right, cool. But Patrick alerts the group the next morning that he heard some moaning. There was no rule breaks with Nathan last night. I used my shorts and just kind of put them between our lips. Any loopholes attempted by guests during their stay at the retreat will be adjudicated by Lana and if deemed to contravene the rules will be punishable under clause 1.2 page 4. So yeah, they tried a loophole, but uh, the narrator quickly explains that loopholes are not part of the system and they still will be fined. I gotta give it to them, they did try uh, stuff. Honestly, not the worst. I mean, they started off not by trying at all. I, I don't, I'm not mad at it. Think about the Olga. She looks just like my ex, bro. Wow, your ex bro must be hot. Get, get the fuck out. Leave. Leave your belongings at the door and get out. So are we all making moves on Olga then? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I am feeling it more with Bo though, you know? I know you like Bo. <laughs> Three of the guys are in a room. Five feet apart because they're not gay. And they're like, oh, are we having another love square with a different girl this time, Olga? And Harry, for once, is like, no, I've been hitting it off with Bo. And throughout this experience, I guess some of the instances have shown him and Bo being like good friends and just having a decent relationship. He actually thought that he was more attracted to Georgia, but he found himself being pretty attracted to Bo at the end of the day because of the relationship that they have that's beyond physical, which is kind of how a real relationship develops. You start just enjoying the person's company, and even if you didn't think initially, oh man, I didn't see you as that attractive person, you're like, damn, 
You really are. Sometimes it's both, sometimes it's neither, sometimes it's either. But this is the more healthy way to get in a relationship. George is my type, right? right. Looks wise. Right. So like, I overlook Bo, but right. like, when I spend time with Bo, we just, right. it's just so natural. It's so natural. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Dude, just ask her how she feels about you. Yeah. Be a human. <laughs> yeah, Patrick is genuinely just saying the stuff that everyone's thinking on the show. Dude, just be a human. This is not high school. We're like in our 20s. If you feel some way, say it. Come on, dude. You're not a robot. Everyone's laughing like this is high school like what she's what is she gonna say good vibes all around good energy i'm like a ball of energy like bouncing around like and we I can see that. that and i need someone to like bounce off of that good energy did she just say energy like two three times like she's a power ball person i got someone to like bounce on my energy you know i got a lot of energy i pay a lot of the energy bill is pretty high this this month can you do me a favor yeah can you go get us some new drinks but all right before you go i feel like you're too far away i'm gay <laughs> Uh, so then Stefan uses the classic maneuver of can you get us a drink and Harry goes to get them a drink and Olga and Stefan kiss losing them six thousand more dollars that's 600 more big max thank you very much I'm sorry zingle burgers I got I'm just I think it's the heat that's getting to me and I'm not too hot to handle but the heat is yeah it's definitely been a weird day with jazz I'm not really sure uh, they then go to a dress-up party, and Obi is dressed up like a cockatoo? Maybe a cock or two, I don't know what he's dressed up like. But he then confesses that him and Jazz, he doesn't know what's going on because he feels that she's really not into him like that. It's just very hard to take him serious when he looks like a ballerina who's on his first day of ballerina school, but he's also a 25-year-old man. There's nothing wrong with being a ballerina, but that outfit, my god. I think I'm just gonna ask her, like, do you see us being something more than what this is? I'm more focused on trying to find, like, what's going on here between you and I. We may not be compatible damn what jazz you literally only had truth in the show you was like not into him because he was lying and stuff and you just wanted to find a good guy obi comes in he's you know really seems like a cool dude and you instantly friend zone him on day two you've only known him for a day and already he's getting friend zoned more like a friendship thing with us mm -hmm. i think he's taking it as well as anybody would He's dressed up like a fucking ballerina cockatoo mix on day one of coming to a new island where he took you on a date and then you friend zoned him the same day. How how much possibly better could he take it? Genuinely. This man deserves a medal of valor for putting up with this shit. Obi, I, I'm sorry, man. Please, could everyone gather in the cabana immediately? There has been a breach. Did you guys kiss yes or no? Obi then gets annoyed at the fact that Lana tells everyone that someone's breached the rules and Obi's like, Did you kiss? Did you kiss? The only time Obi's ever angry is when people lose him money. Hell yeah. This kiss has cost the group $6,000. Last night, there was another breach. No. There's a pair of shorts between our lips. That's not something you hear every day, is it? There's a pair of shorts between our lips. What, anatomically, how does that work now? I was just trying to kiss him, but I put my shorts between our lips so it doesn't count. I, I just put a coconut between our lips so it doesn't count. You know, I just put things between our lips and it doesn't count. Sometimes I put a dick between, I just want to do things, you know? I mean, what was the actual point in that? Holly and Nathan, what you did goes against the spirit of the retreat and is therefore a rule break. <laughs> Oh my god, she slapped him. <laughs> she gave him that. This has cost the group $6,000. Nathan and Holly, you have broken the most rules since arriving at the retreat. So it turns out Nathan and Holly have been perpetual, habitual rule breakers. They've lost the group something like, you know, $42,000, they've lost the biggest chunk. So to do something to see if this will actually help or hurt them, Lana then poses an ultimatum. These two spend a night in one of the sexiest rooms possible, but they have to not do anything. If they don't do anything for the night, they gain some money back. But if they lose, they lose double the money. Of course, they don't know this. So the other members of the group have to bet either against or on them, which is actually the only time in this whole script I was like, that is a decent, decent thing. I wanted to see. I had my money against them because I don't think that they could possibly keep their hands away from each other. And they clearly don't respect any of the rules or other people's money or efforts. So that's my personal thing. This will be your shot at redemption. Nathan and Holly, you must spend 
the night alone in the private suite. Oh my god. That's that's uh, some polar <laughs> tactics, isn't it? You actually mess with the group so much that they give you your own private room. Can you imagine in survival if you kept losing the challenges and they were like, yo, for you, you keep losing challenges. We're gonna give you a night at the best hotel in the world. <laughs> You are now going to the Burj Khalifa to spend your time. Survivor, only for people who can actually survive. People who can't survive get five star treatment. So yeah, the bedroom is uh, decorated with candles and lots of other things, it's romantic. And it's supposed to be a reverse psychology where even though it's romantic, these two need to not touch each other and keep their hands off each other. Again, if I had lost a group $42,000, I would put this woman across the room from me and be like, yo, tell me the most gross story about your family and tell me about your period pains. I'm seeing handcuffs, I'm seeing rose petals, I'm seeing a big bath. How much do you trust Holly and Nathan? And they pass the test to $57,000 that has been lost so far will be returned. So there's a little bit of gambling going on here. Basically, Lana's like, it's all or nothing. You can either bet with them or against them. If you bet on them not touching each other, you win all your money back. The prize money's 200K. If you lose that, it goes from 57,000 to $114,000 that you've lost. And we dip below 100,000 bucks. So Lana's asking to place bets and everyone has to choose whether they're with or against Nathan and Holly. I could break a couple rules time. I felt so supportive of them and I feel like now they don't give a f anymore. I honestly do have faith in them. This is a real test. Like, watch them actually pass it. So Patrick, for some reason, says that he has faith in them because Patrick is just a faithful guy. He's just always got faith in people that lose him forty, fifty thousand dollars And he convinces everyone to be like, yeah, yeah, no, we have faith in them. We're gonna, we're gonna go against them touching each other. Everyone then puts their money on Nathan and Holly staying abstinent for the night. And Patrick talks. He's so convincing. Like Patrick said, I feel like they're gonna prove us wrong. By the way, I just want to say, it's literally been two days and these two have managed to lose almost $50,000. Financial person in the world if you lost $50,000 in two days just from having sex. Three, four, five. <laughs> we got nothing to lose. Why don't we just put it all on the line and see what happens? You do have something to lose, Patrick. You got $57,000 on the line, my guy. Remember? If you decide to trust them and they fail, the prize fund will drop 57 dollars do you remember? This is definitely not nothing to lose. This is literally double or nothing. So, oh my god. Putting my faith in a man who puts flowers on his hair and sings off key is a very, very tough thing. If you think that we should trust them, hands up right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Majority rules, let's go. Here we go. I like how she counted. It was only one or two people who didn't put their hands up, and she's still like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Right. And and how many how many think that they're gonna do something? One, two. <sighs> okay, so I think I think the majority rules on them not touching each other. Yeah, eight to two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good. It's a lot of money we've lost. Thank you. I have noted your decision. <sighs> Goodbye. Please do not let Nathan and Holly have screwed this up. Do you know how bad it is when you pray to God for people not to bang each other? When people are praying for food every night, that's why they say grace. This guy's like, grace, better not bang another person tonight. I'll tell you, I'm a kicker ass. All right, thank you. I'm hoping everyone's going to be really happy with us. So the next night, they come in and they realize people made a bet on them, which they didn't know the night before. When you left for the suite, I asked the group whether they would put their faith in you as a couple. Holly, why won't you look at us? Oh, oh my God. Holly doesn't look at them when they start saying they put their money on Nathan and Holly and they start to realize something's gone horribly wrong. That's right, they had sex. This has cost the group $57,000. Did you think for a second, maybe it's not a good idea? You knew you had to resist it. Damn, Georgia, remember when you said you literally didn't care about the money and then the first nine minutes of the show, you fully, fully decided that you were going to kiss someone? Obviously you didn't have the family's interest because you kissed twice. I thought you'd like the thought first five times. <laughs> Obi then says, didn't have the family's best interest in mind because you guys kissed twice. Obi's been there for a day. <laughs> But to be honest, the couples have only been there for three days, so 
Come to think of it, this is show is uh, like beyond trash. I just thought that they were there for months. And I don't know why I thought that because Survivor takes longer than like a week. But it really seems to me like these guys have only done this for a week and couldn't keep it in their pants, which just, just makes me hate them even more. Yeah. Still like, on top of your 31, we're going to go to 46. And because you kissed twice, you have been fined an additional $12,000. So they lost 57000 plus 12000 which, you know, ironically is $69,000. It's ironic, but it's really painfully ironic. Obviously, they had no idea we risked that amount of money on them. I do feel a bit sorry for them. Like, I feel like I needed to come here and, like, talk to everyone. So everyone is hating on Holly and Nathan, and both of them now are going on apology tours, saying that they're sorry, and then they just need another chance not to mess it up. I I'll spare you the waterworks. Like, it's supposed to be a sad moment they play the sad music uh, people are supposed to be sorry it's like i'm sorry we keep having sex. we're just in love ever since i met him three days ago i really really just like him and nathan's like man i'm sorry man my, my ding dong just goes wherever it wants to i'm sorry about that bro i don't think that you're sorry that you're doing it i think you just feel bad at like how bad that we're reacting i'm genuinely sorry from the bottom of my heart in my head, I was like, yo, if they're smart, one of them would have slept on the floor, one of them would have slept on the bed. I like how Obi's in that position that girls are in when they gossip about guys and then kick their feet up. He's in that position talking to his homies about that. This gives me the I kiss my homies on the forehead at night type vibes. Obi's the funniest dude without trying. My boy's gonna hold it down. I put everything on you and it just sucks that. It didn't go the way we planned, honestly. You put everything on him? Obi, this is not your money. You just came on the show yesterday. You didn't even have anything to do two days before this. I know a girl, and her name is Lana. Dear Lana, you're so special just to me. Damn, I never heard anybody who sing. He's not even like off key. He just, it sounds like he's just talking. It doesn't sound melodic at all. Lana, I met a girl who's crazy and her name is Lana. It sounds like something that you'd sing in like depression era, like 1915 or something. When you're just very sad. This is what music sounded like. Just very like, ugh. I don't even want to turn on the radio. <laughs> what the hell was that all about last night? Rewind. Said it in my sleeve, I didn't mean it. <laughs> so then Harry finally confronts Bo and says that, you know, he really likes her. And it turns out the night before, he's been developing feelings. And Bo is feeling the same way, which is the one cute thing in this whole series. These two slowly and evidently falling for each other throughout the series and being pretty wholesome about it by not actually breaking any rules because Bo and Harry have not broken any rules to this point. <laughs> no, don't start saying that. I'm enjoying getting to know you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you, he laughs after everything. I mean, I'm getting to enjoy you a little bit. <laughs> Come on, I've just, I'm just, I'm just played. I'm just played with you. <laughs> what about you? You haven't told me anything. Anyway, how do you feel? You're right. <laughs> They need subtitles, honestly. We're, most people are American and we're listening to American English, not English English. Both of them have very thick accents and neither of them sound like they're talking English. They sound like they're talking just a mixture of like cursive. It's like you're dead chilled. I keep thinking, yeah, I'll just keep pushing it away, pushing it away. But last night, <laughs> I gave in. <laughs> I admitted to how I felt and I don't regret it, to be honest. I feel like this dude is just not prepared to say things that have any social pressure. Every time he does, he laughs after it and it would be very very, very catastrophic. I just ran you over. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh man, can I call the hospital? Oh, you look like you're dying. <laughs> oh, did she die? Oh. But he did tell me that he liked Georgia. I don't want to be hurt. I've been hurt badly in the past. So hopefully he's telling the truth. There's no one I would want to make a deeper connection with. Yeah, Bo then says hopefully that things will go all right. She's been hurt before. And deep down in the core, I think all of these people have been hurt in some way, shape or form to create whatever this facade is that they've come on the show for. I don't think many people there have had genuine relationships. Believe it or not, you can be a good looking person and not bang everything that walks. You 
can still have and maintain a healthy relationship. You can still also be faithful, and I think that is healthy and probably the thing that'll benefit you more in life in the long run. I'm not saying, again, that you shouldn't explore or date or have that period or go through it for as long as you want. But I think at the end of the day, the fact that we're promoting this in society and this is a show that you can get recognition on and then boost your social profile just makes it seem like they don't really prioritize actual healthy relationships on the show. What's in the box? So far, you have lost $126 thousand dollars in three days they lost one hundred and twenty six thousand dollars this is giving me anxiety man these people are so reckless with money and all they have to do is not do anything not doing anything gets you money and they still f it up when your watch is neutral retreat rules apply when i observe two people forming a genuine emotional connection they will be rewarded with a green light retreat rules do not apply so then lana gives everyone watches and plays the red light green light game basically green Green light means you can kiss someone, red light means don't just continue not doing it. The only time they get a green light is if they develop an actual human connection. I don't know how or what that's based on and it seems like just another rule to add so people by the fifth or sixth episode aren't like I'm watching something else because the show just doesn't have the legs to go to 10 episodes but people still watch it. It's 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 got four seasons. The fourth season is out as I'm doing this video. And another one. I cannot believe people watch it but they do. There are two guests that have not committed to the retreat. Just? <gasps> you have not allowed yourself to go past a certain point. I feel like I probably could have like opened up. Damn, uh, this is a weird scene to see. It's Obi holding truth like as if he's lost a partner in life. They're really choked up about it, man. Wow. And Jazz also is probably right. She's like, I probably could have opened up more. The fact that she didn't or didn't learn anything on the show is pretty indicative of how sh the show is that it doesn't let their guests even have anything to take away like there's been no learning experience which is the sign of a bad show at least on love is blind you learn what you don't want on this show they just continue doing the same thing after they go the second and final person to leave oh is oh my god truth no. Obi, how, do you really like him? I don't even think you've talked to him. Obi's holding him like he's a brother in arms and they lost at a war or something. You have continued to display behavior from your player past. Please leave the retreat. We have to become a better version of ourselves and not be that womanizing asshole that we were back home. <laughs> So this is a weird turn of events, but Jasmine and Truth have to leave the show. And uh, neither of them have learned anything. And they say Truth has displayed stuff from his player past. Jasmine's not actually committed or learned anything. So they're leaving them and kicking them out. It's sort of like survival when you vote someone out, but it happens within three days. How are they supposed to change their ways in three days? All that's happened is they came on the show, they lost money and then got kicked out. It's such a cheap, cheap way to run a show. And I know Netflix can produce it so easily easily because a budget of $200,000 is not big in the scheme of like entertainment and having all these people split as contestants I don't know if they get paid much or anything it just means they get free content they get to bank money back from people who watch the show when they're having comas or strokes or stuck in hospital and can't change the channel but they're actually making money back out of people who just too desperate or too stupid to even do something about it they're basically getting paid an exposure and that is the worst thing to get paid in but we will continue this on part two. I'm just gonna take a little intermission and I'll be right back. It's 30 something degrees. I'm too hot to handle right now. Okay, everyone, two minutes and then we're, we're back. All right, so we've done a quick intermission. I've changed shirts because I'm a merch machine. This is the other one. So if you haven't bought it by now, buy it. And if you don't want to, that's actually completely fine. I really don't want you to feel like you need to, but yeah. Earlier today, I gave you watches to encourage you to explore your emotional connections. To help you put this into practice, tonight is date night. Please remember. Man, for Holly and Nathan, they keep giving them good shit. Every time they mess up, they give them like good stuff. I just don't understand. They're like, oh, you guys keep having sex and kissing. Here, go on another date. It's like they just want them to fail and keep failing. I don't know why this two people like in the show they had such an emphasis on there was other exciting characters patrick when i saw your face i knew it was a big race huh? and obi patrick i have the high ground they could have went on a date this is a chance to prove you can connect on more than just a physical level this is real money isn't it 
Yeah, I'm not romantic at all, are you? Yeah, I like to think I am. Man, like I said, they need some subtitles because I didn't understand that shit at all. I'm not a romantic, get up. Yeah, why? Well, it's just too, just too garbage, man, talking. I'm the trash man. I feel like the Georgia situation plays on the back of your mind a bit. Yeah, it does. I didn't even vibe with Georgia. We barely spoke two words. It's like Wallace and Gromit and shit. I don't know exactly what's being said. And the ocean doesn't help. It's really like watching a foreign language film. Like this is, I might as well be watching Parasite at this point. It showed me that I, I, I do really like her. I really like ya. Oh, her accent. I've got a massive guard on. I'm scared of commitment and it's so hard. I feel the same, but I've still come to terms with the fact that I like ya. So, I mean, this is the one thing that I said was pretty decent and cute there's some sort of actual bonding going on where the two are talking and discussing about their feelings even so far as to say Bo is like I'm I have a guard up constantly and it's hard to let it down that's important in terms of character development and so I think that's pretty good the fact that they're actually doing that the light then turns green and they get really happy and they share their first kiss and like I said this couple didn't do anything until now and it's only when the rules allow them to so for all that's been bad in the show <clears throat> there are a few people who can very much keep it together and i i think that they're pretty decent i can't stop smiling <laughs> i feel like it's the first kiss i've ever had that's uh, really cute but the sex guru returns now this is about expressing that sexual tension inside of, to get it out and today he's about ready to express the inner emotions by painting a canvas and talking about feelings which uh which which is good I, I guess now is the time to have that conversation feel it from the bottom of your testicles ah there he is that, that's the one have you ever been to a class where they're like yo feel it from the tits to the clits that's that's the one this guy really he's I, like i said he's he said he's a sex guru or a sex master i don't know what he is water earth fire Sex. But he just seems like a guy who likes saying the word testicles and then screaming at people. You see what I mean? So then he gets all the guys to scream and it sounds like they're getting their testicles pulled on. My dick is hard every single minute of every day. Im impressive, Patrick. Impressive. You managed to sound like a BG and also uh, make me hate you a little more. That's thank you for that. Telling me about your dick being hard every single minute of every day. I appreciate that, Pat. Appreciate that. You're gonna write some words. That might be how somebody described you. Generally, men have found it hard to access their emotional side because we live in a culture where men use sex to mask their real feelings. Love it. Uh, he's not wrong, but uh, he's also not right with most things. So I just never know what to think of the sex ecologist man right here. I know that seems to be like, you know, it's his profession, but it's also a very weird one. And I just don't know who he is. I don't like the fact that he every now and again comes to visit the guys. He pulls up in shorts and he just starts screaming at them. He's like a dad who went out for cigarettes and then periodically comes back into their son's lives. My entire life, I have tried to be this strong, powerful, dominant person because I'm honestly afraid of losing control. Oh, uh, no, no, because it's honestly because you're a weak bitch. But anyway, <clears throat> sorry, I didn't mean to say it like that. Point is, uh, Stefan actually had a character arc. He actually said some real stuff there. Admitting or actually coming to terms with the fact that these may be the problems that uh, plague you, maybe this is the reason that you haven't had a healthy relationship, is a very, very good way to start. And it's a very good way to get on the path by recognizing these are my problems. If I can just fix them or get better at them, maybe I have a shot at a decent, healthy relationship that'll last a lifetime. And that should be the end goal for anybody who's really, really wanting that. Prop to him genuinely so then they uh do a little class where they throw some balloons at the words that they've been deemed as to create a new version of themselves and a new art and genuinely that's kind of cool i think that every now and again the show does have moments that display high iq or something that maybe guys or girls should do in terms of getting themselves to a higher level sometimes taking that time to learn yourself is important and maybe people go so fast in life that they don't actually take time to slow down and be like, well, what is it about me that is not good? Or what is it about me that I can better myself on? You wouldn't expect to find that on a show like Too Hot to Handle. But every now and again, like I said, they do vaguely impress me. Prepare 
for new arrivals. Yeah, but then the show ruins itself by getting another contestant who uh, says she has a big ass and she's ready to uh, sit it on anyone who doesn't have a wedding ring. And this is Brianna, so meet her. She's got an ass. I'm definitely not interested in following rules from a robot. I'm here to have fun. And again, another contestant who's a girl who just doesn't care if she loses money or not because very, very frankly, do any of the girls care about the money? They can get money by just looking the way they look. There's a million guys who are willing to give them money. They don't care. The, this is the problem with the show. If you just got lots of guys who needed the damn money, they would probably be like, come on, bro, stop sleeping around. It's the fact that the girls are doing it, kissing each other, doing whatever, and being like, sorry, oops, I lost like $10,000, oopsies. They don't give a shit. That's the problem. This woman literally got on the show three days in, and she's like, I don't care. She just got here, and she doesn't care. What's your like, history of boys then? I definitely go for people that I shouldn't be with. I'm like the bad person of my friends. It's not a flex. You need to fix that. What is wrong? This is this is the equivalent of being like, I have a stink that's broken. It's not a flex. Fix it. Fix it. I'm Kerry, an ex rugby player from South Africa. Ah, more South Africans. You've you've got to love it. This guy's name is Jerry, but it's Afrikaner, so it's Kerry. Honestly, I just call, I don't even care what his name is. He's an ex rugby player and a current idiot. So, I come from I suppose quite a traditional family. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> How did he get a face like that? Did they combine like a horse with a man? What the fuck happened? My mother is a politician. Was your father a horse? And my father is a judge. Oh, okay. Fan of women and they were a fan of me. If I like something, I don't see why I shouldn't go for it. My God, does he, he perpetually looks like the sun is like assaulting him. This man, wow. Unfortunate face, my man. But anyway, nice, nice, nice. Other than that, very nice. My prayers have been answered. Jackson is so fit. And he's English. He's got English banter. He's tall. Oh my god, he looks like he's constipated. <laughs> this man really doesn't look like he's enjoying himself. He looks like he's in pain 24-7. Jesus Christ, man. He's also got a poem from the 1980s. It's it's past that day and age, my guy. Listen, like, I'm just so about Nathan. Yeah. Basically, I came in here and... My eyes were on Nathan. Guess it's so those are the three new contestants. Too hot to handle as usual by the seventh episode is like, oh, we need more things to keep people watching. So they keep bringing on new people because they just don't know what to do to get people to stay on the channel. Unlike a, a good show that has any credibility, they just need to keep throwing gimmicks at you so that you're like, ah, I guess I'll watch. And so they bring in three new people to the group. Holly then tells Brianna that she's with Nathan. Nathan's the love of her life. She's known him three days. Is. That's great. Uh, and Brianna's like, well, anything that I can't have, I go for. Remember, Holly? She said that. Unless, Unless you, you have, have a wedding, wedding ring, ring everybody's, everybody's fair game. game. So, so sorry. sorry. So if you didn't say anything, she would have probably not done it. But you did it. And now she's going to try for him. That's on you, Holly. Everyone's saying, like, Nathan is so off limits. It's almost like a cookie and you can't eat it. And then you're like, hmm, I might just take a bite. Well, she definitely belongs on this show. Meanwhile, Jackson, the English contestant, talks to the other two English contestants, Izzy and Olga. To actually speak to you properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really nice to meet you both. Fresh me. <laughs> Fresh me in the resort. Okay, so you're telling me I'm on the menu. What is wrong with his face? He looks like he got Botox and never recovered. I just can't understand. He looks like a broccoli that came to life. I don't get what this man looks like. How can you... How can you look like that? Like he's 20 and 80 at the same time. Absolutely. Tell us a bit more about you. I used to model. Model what? Did you model broccoli? What is wrong with your face? Just explain, please. I need explanation. And that's scoring, so I grabbed my shorts, my pants, pulled up my score to try. I know. What language is that one? Is that? I, okay, well, again, can we get the subtitles out? <laughs> And I was scoring, so I grabbed my shorts, my pants, pulled up and scored a try. I know. Yeah, had to teach like the orphans, like tag rugby, would like rebuild orphanages, like. In in the rugby game, you she built an orphanage in the rugby game. I didn't know that was part of rugby. I might need to watch the sport a little more. I didn't know building orphanages was part of the sport. Jesus Christ! I thought you had to build relationships with the team and shit. She's building orphanages. This is what this is some good rugby. I tried surfing. I was literally in the sea like every second. Like she yeah, she was she tried surfing and she was literally in the sea as opposed to I tried surfing metaphorically. I was always there. I was catching a wave in my head every day. 
Thank you, Olga. Thank you. But somehow I'm still engaged. So to be fair to her, on some level, must be killing it. His nostrils are so big. I'm sorry. I'm, I know that it's not supposed to be too hot to judge. But just really speaking, he's got a very drawable face. Like in the Titanic. Jack, I want you to draw me like one of your French girls. A few moments later. I feel it coming. I'm genuinely excited to get to know you. <sighs> While Jackson is busy chatting up the two English buds, Obi, the one other black contestant who's still there, has to mingle with the other black contestant because, like I said, love is blind. Uh, sorry, <laughs> love isn't blind. Love is racial on this show. It's too hot to handle, and all the black contestants have to mingle because we're in that society. So Obi uh, tries to hit it off with Brianna, but as usual, my boy gets friend zoned by everyone in the show. I don't know. Why? I don't get it. He, what is wrong with Obi that people don't like? Do you like genuinely, like just regularly, like, yo, you catch that game yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I you can see he's happy. She said we're sexy people. He's like, yeah, you want me? Yeah. I feel like we're going to be talking so much that people are going to be like, these two. They don't. Yeah, and then she friend zoned him. She said, oh, she said we're going to be talking regularly, like, like he's her therapist. <sighs> Obi. I don't know what it is, man. I don't know. Maybe change your hair. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I don't. Jackson has more goals than you. You need to check his face. Maybe you need to wear a mask. I don't know. What's up, baby? Now Jackson has stepped in. He's so much more what I actually want than Steven. Me and you are such an early stage. I don't know. Meanwhile, Olga and Steven have the talk. Olga needs to tell Steven that she's not actually into him. And this would be the second person who friend zones him. This poor man started off as a bad boy with tattoos and GK stunt double thinking that he was going to get every goal. He just got played by every goal. I feel genuinely sorry for this man. He actually did some growing. I think I think he's one of the better characters on the show. The new guys are here. If you want to get to know them, you're more than welcome to. And if m I more people come do. in. I think I want to get to know them. Like obviously Jackson's like a London guy. She named two. London guy from England. So that's the things that he's got that you don't got. All right. Yeah, I like him. Are you not English? Um, and Steph Stephen actually takes this extremely well, uh, and he said that, you know, uh, all of the control in which he normally tries to exert, or all of the feelings in which he had, he, he let go and he was okay with it. Which is genuinely some character arc that he can take beyond the show into his actual life. So, I, I think, like I said, I genuinely think he's a pretty cool character, um, a pretty cool person in the fact that he's able to learn and take something from this experience uh, on a show that genuinely takes from you watching the experience because it's such a shit show but good good for him so now we see Georgia who is the serial data on the show who every time she sees someone she has to have them and then every time they get too close she pushes them away um, now she's talking to Kheri the African the Africana South African dude who's wearing a leopard print he might as well have killed that leopard I don't know he's from South Africa I'm a rule breaker so do I go with my gut feel and like I know I feel something or what do you what do, what do you say? We all came here to meet people. I think so and too. And have fun. So on the first meeting of Kheri and uh, Georgia, they kiss, breaking another rule, losing again six hundred single bogus. And honestly, I have a very very I have hatred towards anyone who broke the rules in the show. That is a lot of single bogus and a lot of KFC that could have been consumed. I woke up and I'm feeling really positive. I feel like I'm ready to explore. Oh, uh, Obi and Stevan in the same bed. Yep. What happened there? Why Why didn't we get more on that? <laughs> They're just sleeping in the same bed. Okay, I'd like to see that story if I could. I have planned dates for our latest guests. However, that is not possible for everybody. So the next day, Alexa, fake Alexa. Lana comes in and says uh, all the new contestants should get dates with people, but a couple of them have broke the rules, and so they're not going to get dates. Who do you think those people are? Okay, all right, I'll tell you guys what. I kissed Georgia. Okay, there's the, there's one. $6,000 has been deducted. Jackson, please select someone from the group to take. Uh, but, you know, like the fit English man he is, Jackson hasn't kissed anyone yet. His nostrils have been keeping him, like, at bay. 
So he gets to actually choose someone. And Olga and Izzy are the two people that he's had his eye on. But he chooses the one who you don't think he's going to choose. Are you up to anything later, Izzy? I'm going on a date! Finally! <laughs> I'm happy for you guys. <laughs> I'm left with no one. Then Brianna gets to select anyone, and Holly remember remember Holly said, "Please don't date the man that is my soulmate that I met three days ago." Listen, like I'm just so about Nathan. Yeah. Basically, I came in here and my eyes were on Nathan. And Brianna was like, "I'm going to." So she picks him. Sorry, Nathan. <laughs> You know what, you gotta appreciate quality when you see it. So, you know, Bria's a good looking girl. Is the name Bria? Honestly, I don't I don't care. Her name could be Terrence for all I I don't know. She's really not in the show for long enough for me to care about her. And she really provides nothing for anyone. Oh sorry, that may be scathing, but that's just the truth, lady. You know what? You have every right to feel like this. It's so shitty for you. You know, if he goes and his head's turned, then, you know, it's gonna tell me that he makes poor decisions and poor investments because yeah. he spent 100 grand for what? I mean, that's exactly right, Holly. He spent 100 grand on you. I'm not saying that you're not worth 100 grand, but I'm saying you're definitely not in three days. I, I don't think that anybody could be like, oh, well, it's three days. I'm gonna lose 100 grand banging you. I, that's not an investment. There's no ROI on that. It's just a lot of pain. So also he keeps saying yes to the dates and you're right, he could say no. So this is your man's right here. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Like, I'm not entertaining anyone else. I feel like I haven't been like actually vulnerable to one person in so long. I've just been completely about him and- What does he do? Holly, that makes you feel all this extra stuff because clearly he's doing something that I'm not aware of. In the show, all you guys have done have, have banged each other. I don't know if this warrants all of the feelings that you don't have. I think this is just lust and your confused emotions which you can't seem to justify, control or actually rationalize. I think you need to really understand who you are as a person and figure out what it is that you really like and what you can bring to the table before you start crying over guys you've known for three days and lost a hundred grand with this just seems like a bad vegas trip at this point that's how bad it is it's like it's just at the expense of my emotions and like this is what happens when you get close to somebody they have control over your emotions yeah i mean that again 100 percent of you problem you need to figure out who you let control these emotions and if you say someone is controlling your emotions you need to learn to be better so that you don't actually let someone control how you feel. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just something that you need to do in order to be a better person for yourself. Uh, you sitting there crying is playing the victim, especially over someone like Nathan, who has proved to do nothing for anyone. I don't know if you've noticed, but this dude has been a piece of shit the whole show. He can't follow rules. He can't have enough self-discipline to not lose all the other group's money. He goes on dates with everyone, even though he says he's with you. And he's really done nothing redeeming this whole show. Show. Is this really what you want? Really? Yeah, well, I, I'm never really this bashful, but I am now, so maybe that's, no, maybe nice. that's a good sign. It's good to hear. So Jackson and Izzy get along pretty well. They exchange maybe two or three lines and then kiss each other. Because the show is, shouldn't be called uh, Too Hot to Handle. The show should be called Herpes. Do you have it? Obviously, I got my eggs in a basket at the moment. But you I gotta mean... take them out the basket. Just put them on the side. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... Yeah, I don't know. We have to Never see. put all your eggs in one basket, you know? That's what they all say, you know? Yeah, you're doing that. Uh, meanwhile, Brianna and Nathan go on a date. They make sexy fondue. I like to call it fondue doo and then laugh. <laughs> They both just sort of hit it off and he knows that she's a beautiful woman but at the same time he's like ah i'm with holly and brianna is trying to play the seductress and steal him away from his woman because that's just what she does with her spare time then nathan says that she has a big ass and she's like yeah i do and then she feeds him something and then literally after that he's like i'm seeing different sides to you what are these people fucking seeing that i'm not aware of in the show what the fuck is happening that i cannot see in between am i not reading between the lines at some point something's happening in the show that i'm not aware of because nothing's happening but clearly something in their heads is happening i would just love to know what they think so i'm gonna tell her exactly what happened and then tell her exactly how i'm feeling then he goes and uh, he sits down with Holly and he's like, man, she's got a big ass and you're white, so you can't compete. He doesn't say that, but he might as well have. I will be honest to her and see how she takes it. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. She's a great girl, obviously, like, she's 28. Yeah. She's a great girl, translation. She's got a great ass. She's got a really good ass. 
That's he might as well have said it. He was like, I'm gonna be honest with her. Completely didn't say that. He knew he would be in the dog out, so he said that. That's beautiful. She's good looking, she's got a lot about her. There's like red wine there, there's chocolate sauce, strawberries. Alright, so get to the point. Do you think that you might have turned his head a little bit? Of course. Like ah, like I said on the show, when there's new contestants, they're like siblings. They can't even see each other as attractive for some reason. So there's Brianna talking to Jackson, and they're talking like they're best friends, even though theoretically they should be able to date each other because everyone's on the show. But for some reason, that dynamic doesn't work, and Too Hard to Handle never explains this. Nah, I think I'm still, I'm definitely with you. I know where my head's at. And my head's totally I think that's one thing that I really love about you, is just you, you're an honest man and you're loyal. Bitch, he went on three different dates since meeting you, and he also didn't tell you about half the stuff that he- Are you serious? You known him for three days, you think he's your soulmate, you lost $100,000 since meeting him. This is the worst decision of your life, woman. Are you kidding me? Really? I feel like I've been disrespected a little bit by Brianna. And there's so many questions, I'm, I'm not gonna be walked on. 100%. This whole show, I've been trying to figure out who Holly looks like. And, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong. If you have Google open, can you search up the basketball player Clay Thompson? I think she looks like Clay Thompson as a goal. I don't know if that's disrespectful, but I think it's the nose. She honestly looks like she could be an NBA champion. That's so cool. Or maybe Clay Thompson could look like her if he had a wig. That's pretty cool. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I've been thinking about it. And I think she really looks like one of the greatest three point shooters in the world. Holly's gonna have an absolute meltdown I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of here for it I'm gonna wait till she comes in so a uh, nighttime hurricane Holly comes out and she's like where's Brianna I want to know where Brianna is and uh, it turns out Brianna's been doing her nighttime routine for the last four hours <laughs> you laughed all fucking night you <laughs> don't look at me <laughs> you know one thing led to another and I suppose we spent a bit of cash Ah, and meanwhile, while they were waiting for Brianna, Jackson put the moves on Izzy and possibly banged her. The rule breaks committed were one kiss on the beat, one kiss in the bedroom, a uh, rubbed, a uh, intimately. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? A what? Wait, that could mean anything. A nut rubbed, a butter rubbed. Oh, what the fuck does that mean? Something rubbed. What does that mean, man? Can you guys actually say it? You haven't censored anything the whole show. Now it's like, oh, this is too hot to handle. This is too hot. This has cost the group. Sixteen eight for now. I think they really build us up like a Christopher Nolan movie. Twenty-two thousand dollars. I am never gonna financially recover from this. That's gotta be the best dick rub in the world for twenty-two thousand dollars. I mean, come on, bro. I'm sorry. I mean, come on, bro. Jesus Christ, dude. Twenty-two thousand dollars. Price fund now stands at forty-six thousand dollars. So. Just to keep in mind, the prize fund was $200,000 to start, and in three and a half, maybe four days, they've lost $150,000 between them by not being able to keep it in their pants. This is delinquency to a brand new level. All of the one-star reviews are too high for this show. Genuinely. Wow. ...are showing ongoing signs of personal develop development. Uh-oh. She's drunk. So then the fake Alexa... Lana, she has a virus or something, someone gave her maybe a virtual STD, and then she goes offline, and everyone in the group loses their minds, it's like Lord of the Flies, they think they can now bang each other, and nobody's watching them, because they think the rules don't apply. They've already lost $150,000, and now they're pushing it even further. Don't worry Desiree, my guests think that I am flying, but I'm still performing at full capacity. So it turns out Lana's a sneaky bitch and she just went fake offline. She's still spying on people. Uh, now she's trying to catch them off guard. As if it wasn't hard enough for these people when she told them not to do something and they didn't do it. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. You guys, I have a feeling this still might be a mind game. She's still gonna know. That's how you know the show's fake. Holly hasn't had a thought since the show started. She's got no brain capacity, but she suddenly started thinking like she's Sherlock Holmes. First, discombobulate. Dazed, discombobulate. There is no way in hell this woman could ever think past the point of Nathan. So I feel like uh, this is how you know the show's scripted. We've had like the last few days to really get to know each other yeah. on a level. Yeah. Yeah, 
Okay, so then Jackson kisses Izzy again to some horrible music. I feel like Netflix just has a stockpile of people who sing songs and people like artist labels reject them. So they're like, I'm going to go to Netflix. And then they cry because it's a horrible place to end up as a musician. So while Lana is offline, he, d he does the smart move of taking the master suite because he knows that nobody on the show is ever going to do anything with him. That's why he's there. While he does that, Georgia gets hit on by Kheri, who wants to confess and profess his feelings for her because he's had one kiss with her and he thinks that he's, you know, gonna marry her. Because as Dua Lipa said, one kiss is all it takes. And you gotta believe her. You will just see what I mean. I can't wait to, like, settle down. I can't wait to, like, settle down. He had one kiss and he met her yesterday. I don't know if her vagina has got some extra stuff that like not known to man. I'm not sure what it is that she's putting out into the world. But literally from just seeing her, men want to marry her and be with her. And she just gets the ick as they do. And have kids. For God's sake, like chill. I'm honestly, I'm on Georgia's side. I mean, if you've met her for one day and you say you want to have kids. <laughs> I can see how it would be like, whoa, oh, a bit faster, Harry, but too, too speedy, my rugby friend. I am as horny as it gets right now. Um, <laughs> I guess the next morning, uh, Harry is horny and he has to let the wall know. It's, this is just part of the show. You just hear when contestants are very horny. I just, in my head, embedded, Harry's horny, Patrick. Dick is hard every single minute of every day. Great. Good stuff. I, why do I know this? I don't know. But it turns out ha Harry was really, really horny because the cameras caught him uh, yakking off. So that's great. I'm so glad that I had to say that to something. If my mom was ever watching this video, she's going to disown me now. Thanks to you, Harry. I didn't even want to see it. I don't know why they even... This show is horrible. I, I cannot believe I witnessed a man slapping his meat and then he lost $6,000 because of it. That's just a very bad time to lose money. You abandoned your post before the final whistle got blown. Please make sure to behave tonight. You too, though. You promise to behave, though? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Patrick's resorted from uh, someone who wanted to sleep with people at the start of the show to the enforcer by now. He's like, hey, hey, no sex. You two don't sleep with each other. Me? I'm just gonna, I'm just abstaining from sex. It's easy when no one wants you, but I, hey, that's cool. Somehow Patrick left the two people who always break the rules unattended, Nathan and Holly, and they break more rules by doing each other again. Patrick, do your job, bro. <laughs> just go and sing at people. They'll never be attracted to each other again. You have the power to make people want to leave. Yesterday, a virus disrupted my system. I told you it was an STD. Also, you thought in order to test how you would behave when left to your own. Something very charming about like him saying it in an English accent. I've got to be a big boy and own up. I had sex. I had really hot sex with the with, with, with the lady. And and and, 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 and I, 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 I just on her. Maybe we had a kiss. Yeah, Maybe. we had one. Uh, we had we had one kiss. One kiss is all it takes. You know, Dua Lipa. She's a, she's she's an artist. She is. And 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 and, and now I, I just all over uh, easy easy. Yo, oh, that was the that was the face I made when I did it. Jackson and Izzy, your rule break has cost the group six thousand dollars. <sighs> there was another breach of the rules. Might have broken the rules in the shower. You did what? Oh shit, they used his government name, Harold. Oh god. So they found this has got to be an embarrassing moment for Harry, a person who hasn't broken any rules and thought that uh, Lana was offline. So he's like, man, I've been backed up lately. Let me just uh, rub one out. And he got caught in front of everyone, which is, which is damn, damn heartbreaking for good old Harold. Your act of self gratification has cost the group $4,000. Come on. The prize fund now stands. At thirty-six thousand dollars. Jesus Christ! Four days. Four days. They ran through one hundred and sixty-six thousand dollars by not being able to be self-disciplined enough to not touch each other or themselves. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Patrick has lost no money. He's gained the respect of many people, and the only thing that I've realized is that he's very tone deaf. I like him, but I think he should really get the money. Holly and Nathan. You yet again failed to show any form of restraint and broke the ultimate rule of my retreat. Sexual intercourse. 
there was $36,000 in the prize fund. But because of Holly and Nathan's numerous rule breaks last night, your prize fund is now at zero dollars. In terms of money, we have no money. Yeah, so Holly and Nathan actually uh, did each other so many times that they went from $200,000 to zero dollars because they couldn't control themselves. After literally being chastised by the whole group, apologizing, crying to them, saying it'll never happen again, being on a date, going on a retreat, all of that shit meant nothing. These two are the most irresponsible people and have the lowest character arcs that I could possibly see in the series. They've learned nothing and they cost everyone money. I don't know why they're even like seen as people who can be redeemable on the show. After six or seven times, you're just like, please just leave. But for some reason, they keep these two on the show. The next day, Hyori holds Georgia and she's like, it's a little bit hot. And then she pushes him away because she's not a type of person who likes people. As soon as you get too close to her, she leaves. It's hot, don't you? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I, I feel like I don't like to touch him. <laughs> that sounds so horrible. Damn, she's, a, she's cold as ice. No, no, Sherry, all he did was like hug her and she's like, I don't like it. Touching. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> what I am. That's who I am as a human. Damn, who put you on a pedestal? He's crazy. I'm sorry, Harry. I even feel bad for you for that one. Patrick was next to them, by the way. I don't know what he does in his spare time. He just sits next to people. He's like, I'm third wheeling. And I like it. I feel like Harry is coming on a bit too strong. Yeah, I think I'm starting to get the ick. Ah, but when you're like in your late 20s saying the ick, you are the one who is the icky. Holy shit, Patrick then calls everyone to have a meeting and he says the ultimate thing that I hate about the show. He said he grew too much and he and, and, and he now has to leave the family. This is like Vin Diesel leaving Fast and the Furious. It just wouldn't be the same. Who am I going to watch? Jason Statham? You really think he's as funny as Vin Diesel? Vin Diesel is the most hilarious person I've ever seen in my life. And he's not even a comedian. He's just a funny human. Last couple days made me realize that it's time for me to go on my new path. <laughs> You didn't like him. You hated him. Remember when he sung to you and you were like, eh, what are you doing now? Now you're crying just because he's leaving? Patrick is finally, he's, he's got wings. He's like that bird who leaves the nest. And he has to go on to bigger and better adventures, sing his songs to other people who don't want to listen. I'm gonna miss Patrick more than anything, I think. I told you, Stevan is like the most unusual character. He's He surprises me every time. He, the person he's gonna miss the most is, is Patrick. It's kind of a cool bromance. I wish I got to see it blossom more. So then Patrick exits and he's like, ah, this show sucks ass. I'm really happy I was here with all of you. I don't need to be here anymore. And the last two episodes are without him, which I genuinely miss. I, I miss the dude. I think he was the best thing that I was watching on the show. I always th found him funny. But uh, after he leaves, there's just nothing redeemable. And in fact, it gets worse from here. Nathan, you have continued to put your physical urges before emotional connection. So after four days, Lana's like, hey, you keep breaking every rule known to man. I'm going to kick you out. And then uh, Holly acts like this guy's going to World War II or something. He hasn't put a shirt on since he started the show. But anyway, he's now have to, he now has to leave. And he's like, I'll be, I'll be waiting for you on the way out. They have one more day. They have one more day. This, if He could just literally go on a one-day vacation and they'd both be out. The show is going to end tomorrow. That's it. They, all, they have to last five days. And after day four... She's like, I don't know when I'll see you again. Tomorrow, bitch. It's one more day. And so he leaves, but Lana is waiting for him outside. There's a little bit of a redemption happening. Your journey may not be over. You will have to earn it in an intensive one-on-one -on -one workshop. So instead of going home, like the movie Return of the Jedi or the new Star Wars reboot, Nathan goes and he meets his Jedi. But his Jedi is not actually a Jedi. It's that sex dude who keeps turning up from time to time. And now he's going to teach him how to control his sexual urges. Thinking with my penis over my heart or thinking with my penis over my mind. Or thinking with my penis over my mouth or thinking with my penis over my nostril. You never put your penis before anything. That's why they always say, put your penis behind your ass cheeks and just walk like an elephant. What? You know what I mean? The elephant puts its trunk down when it doesn't want to have sex with things. I'm a sexologist. Meanwhile, Harry has uh, 
come to the realization he wants to make Bo his girlfriend and he wants to ask her, which is a very, again, the only character arc and the only wholesome trait that I've seen in the show is those two developing a bond that isn't sexual first. It actually came through friendship and having laughs and then everything else. So I really do uh, support these characters. I think it's pretty cool that he's gonna ask and commit. Hopefully she says yes. This is his opportunity to release. I want you to just yell. I just don't know what this outfit is. I don't, I don't get him. I don't know where he comes from. I don't know where he sleeps. I don't know why he keeps turning up, why they only have one person running every workshop. I don't know who he is. And I, I, I'm just very scared of him really. So then they train, they do a little training montage. He gets more people to scream. They already did that, by the way. This guy's training has already ran its course. He just tells people to scream. They do like three jumping jacks and he's like, you're healed, great. More like open and like secure. I want you just to put your hand, left hand around your penis. Mm. I'm gonna ask you just to put your left hand gently over your heart. This is how they tell you to uh, do an oath in the court nowadays. One hand across your heart and the other across your penis. And it's, I swear to God, to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God, you will shoot me in the nuts if I don't. It's, it's the new one. <laughs> Nobody's lied since. And Nathan is about to learn that life is more than just sex. Take a deep breath into the bottom of your testicles. But at the end... Take a deep breath into the bottom of your testicles. Words to live by from the Sith Lord. Is that an easy thing to do? I don't know. I've never breathed into my testicles, but apparently it's an easy thing if you just... I guess, I guess I'm healed now. Don't smile. You don't have to think with that all the time. This is a gateway. Oh, they even got a damn close-up of him doing the Michael Jackson. <laughs> that's, that's a bit much, isn't it? Isn't it? Why is this man looking at his testicles? He's like, don't smile. Don't have fun with that. The whole point is to not have fun with that shit ever again. I'm, a, I'm so good at sex that you're never going to have fun when I'm done. Now, I'll teach you not to have <laughs> I'll teach you not to like sex. To how you can move that energy, bringing it back up to your heart is literally just thinking differently. Thanks for sharing that knowledge, bro. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most insincere bullshit I've heard in my Yeah, thanks for sharing that knowledge, bro. It is really, I breathe into my testicles and put it into my heart. I'll just come into my heart is what you're saying. I'll put some cum in my heart. That'll be great. Thank you, bro. All right, Nathan, these pieces of coral are going to represent the feelings that you felt when you had to leave Holly. So the first rock represents anger. He then gives him a fucking rock. This dude, I, f I feel like he didn't prepare. And they're like, you're filming today. And he's like, oh shit, I have a blanket in the car. And then he ripped it and put it over his head. And then he got some rocks and he's like, yeah, grab your testicles. Here's some rocks to represent life and shit. Ah, you're healed, bro. It's great. Now you're not going to ever have sex. Throw the rocks in the water, G. Yeah, and then they do some walk by themselves. He throws some rocks into the sea and he's, he's a new man. So this is what happened. If you're ever feeling like you're a bit too sexual, all you have to do is grab Grab your testicles, <clears throat> breathe into them, do three jumping jacks and throw some rocks into the water and you'll be uh, impotent, <laughs> I guess. That's great. While Nathan is running his course with the sex guy, Kerry and Georgia talk it out. And Kerry is like, yeah, I really want to maybe be your boyfriend. And she's like, Ugh! Because people get too close to her and she's not okay with that. And she friend zones him. So she friend zone everyone in the series. I see this as a really good friendship. Harry and Bo talk to each other and he says, how would you feel about being my girlfriend? And she accepts and it's very cute. Great moment. But let's move back to the real issue, the sexologist and uh, Nathan. I have a few things that I want you to to work with for this scenario. They're still training. They're not done. I thought they were done. They still got shit to do. It's been, it started off at daytime, by the way. Sun is setting. This course is really taking a long time. He All he had to do was throw rocks and that was apparently hard enough a task that it took them hours to do. We have Nathan and we have Holly. How did he possibly make those puppets if he didn't know that Nathan was going to leave the show? I'm not, I'm not trying to poke ho holes in this no plot, but this man has pre-made dolls of everyone. That's creepy. Someone needs to run a background check on him. He's probably been putting his dick in the doll's mouth. Disgusting! I don't- I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Be you and speak to Holly. Hey, Nathan. And I'm like, sup, sugar mom? Oh my god, he's enjoying it so much. <laughs> this is like- this is like entertainment for him. He's like, yeah, yeah, do that thing. Do the- do, do that one. <laughs> Oh, I like that. He's so fucking happy. I think we could have maybe shared a bit more special emotional moments. Boom. Connection without sex. 
Simple as that. Now there it is, boom, connection without sex. So after the puppets, Nathan realizes maybe I should have connected with her more than just banged her. And uh, the sexologist is like, yeah, exactly. I don't know why he need puppets to realize that, but anyway. Then they suddenly are at nighttime. So again, this has taken them the whole day for him to do three jumping jacks, hold his nuts, throw some rocks in the water, and then talk with puppets. It took them like 10, 12 hours to do that. I just, it's amazing sometimes, this show. He also has a gong. I don't know where he got that from. This man is pulling a lot of things out of his ass, really. I feel like I now know the reason why I was kicked out. Yeah, and with one gong bang, Nathan has learned everything he needs to about life. And they allow him back into Too Hot to Handle. So he now comes back. And that happens. Nathan. You know it's nighttime, so he came back on the same day he left, which is just really sad that the group is so fucking object permanence that as soon as he leaves, they, they don't even know what to do. And when he comes back, they're like, wow, he's back, he's back, he's back. Everyone was crowding around him like he scored the last goal in a soccer match. You will both be put to the ultimate a night alone in the suite. They've done that before. They already failed it. They do this every time. They fail everything, man. What, Lana, stop giving them chances. And every time you kick someone out, why do you bring the sex guy? Why didn't you do that to any of the other contestants? Why, when Patrick was leaving, why didn't the sex guy be like, yo, I got some puppets for you too? Why? Why he gotta leave? Nathan is not that good, man. I, I'm a team Patrick. Also, Truth left. Jazz left. I don't know where Obi is. He, he might have got lost. Can someone please send a search party? We need to find out where these people are. If you refrain from breaking any rules tonight, you will win back all the money for the group. Wow, that's quite the... This show has no rules, apparently. So they lost all the money in nine episodes, and Lana's like, ah, if you guys just don't do it one more time, I'll just give you all the money back. This is basically like a rich friend who's toying with... Honestly, when I watched this in real time, I just, I had to walk out for air and I never wanted to come back home. I think the show made me really just want to start running like Forrest Gump for years. If Nathan could put what he learned into practice, and as a couple, you could refrain from breaking any retreat rules. I mean, you literally said it was for $200,000. If they break that, then they're literally the two worst people in, in, you know, the whole of Too Hot to Handle. So I don't think it's as big as you make it out to be. If you didn't tell them it was worth anything, maybe that would actually help. The prize fund will be increased from zero dollars to $90,000. Okay, apparently we're making new rules as we go on. Lana's just making the shit up as it comes. She yesterday said you'll win all the money back. Now she's like, ah, I, st I spent 110000 Man, that Rolex was pretty cool. So now apparently you only win 90000 And I'll tell you what the uh, funny thing is, and maybe the stuff that a lot of the producers don't tell you with the show, is that in season one, the prize fund was 100000 And I'm assuming it was the same in season two. In season three, I'm pretty sure the prize fund was a hundred thousand. They just said two hundred thousand to increase viewership, and then people lost it, and then they went back up to ninety. It was a hundred thousand dollars because the show is so cheaply made, and the contestants either don't get paid or get paid very little. They can make a show that runs off of almost no money and then make profit out of it by people who watch it and subscribe to them. So they're basically running a cash grab by creating shows that are very, very horrible and easy to create and binge. Netflix, in a nutshell. They do make amazing shows, but they also make absolute garbage like this. He was able to dig deep, hold firm, and respect the rules of my retreat. Uh, so the next day, Georgia finally has a realization that she's a bitch and <laughs> she goes to Stevan and she's like ah I'm sorry that I have no actual control or I think that I'm worth more than I am and he's like oh it's fine so uh for some reason they make it seem like she's the one learning when in fact this dude has been learning the whole time and actually learned not to control things and just let them happen and has benefited genuinely. But what they do at the end of the show is they choose three contestants who have learned and grown the most and uh, they decide to have a vote on who to give that person the money. And Stevan is not one of them. Somehow Georgia just realizing this last minute thing puts her as one of the three people, which blows my mind. Not that I like the show. I'm not a secret fan, don't worry. But if I was, I'd put Stevan there. Also, I'd put Patrick at the top. I've never met a man like Nathan. I love him to death. It's been four days. Clay Thompson, you could find another better man. I'm telling you, Clay, trust me, you're an NBA champion. I genuinely do love you. I love you too. 
Oh, so apparently they say they love each other and the, uh, the wristbands go green because it's genuine love. And so they can finally kiss without losing money. So they do. Right now, I would like you just to, to grab your drum in front of you. Uh, that night, the sex man comes back and he's got more tools of destruction to display onto the group. And what I love about the drum specifically, it's, it resembles the heartbeat. For me, what all of you represent is one heart together. Then he says some of the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life, and then he starts banging on a drum. The man I'm walking out today is actually okay with the things that have happened, is ready to learn from them and move forward. Put it all together, just one word that represents your time here. So then he's like, yeah, you guys are talking way too much. I said one word. And so now they each have one word to say how they've learned in this experience. I honestly think some of them shouldn't even say any words because most of them haven't learned, but apparently they're all gonna say one word now. So let's listen to these words. Free. Free. Just like brown people. Favorite word? Restraint. Restraint. That's what he needs to be in. Restraints. Really impulsive with patience. I guess patience for her. Selfless. Selfless? Yeah. She just said yeah. She doesn't have, she's just an airhead. I feel like a bit smarter. He said like five words. He didn't even know how to say one. Scared. Scared. Courage. Courage. With that face, you have to have courage. Down. Down, sure. As. And he just said as. So a lot of them are just not really understanding the assignment. And the sex guy's like, well, I'm done with this shit. I got my Netflix check. I'm out of here. And it's up to Lana to finish the show off. The fineness of those who have shown the most personal growth during their time at the retreat. The first finalist is Georgia. Yeah, like I said, Georgia has shown like no actual emotional growth whatsoever. I don't think that she's grown much at all. I would put Stefan in that category for actually doing some growing, but anyway. The second finalist is Nathan. <laughs> what? <sighs> Did he sleep with someone off the air or something? Why do they keep including this man? Has he gr has he grown physically or something? Because he's not grown mentally. This dude has done nothing or no growing. The only time that he's ever grown is when that sex dude was like, yeah, put your heart on your testicles and squash, I mean, breathe. That's the only time I've ever seen him. And then he was like, yeah, I've grown. He just didn't have sex once. And, and he's a finalist. Dude. Obi's been there, and he's been friend-zoned by everyone. Can we give someone else a chance? And finally, the third finalist, Harry and Bo. Decision will be made. Okay, I guess you can also split one into two people. So there's four finalists. Lana, you could just you could just do it that way. But anyway, I guess there's four people now. Harry and Bo, who are actually a couple who grew, probably gonna win this. But anyway, so now you have to vote. Like it's Survivor, you have to vote for the one that you think should win. By the remaining guests. Ugh. It's just a question of deciding which one you think maybe just deserves it the most. Are you, did you just explain after she explained what, what, did they need two explanations? Are the people in this show so dumb that Jackson's like, all right, what you need to do is just give them uh, a vote and then the people with the most votes actually win the show. No, I know I will vote for Georgia. Big surprise, uh, Clay Thompson votes for Nathan. I'm definitely voting for Bo and Harry. Georgia has been through a lot and she opened up as an amazing person. She helped me grow through this whole process. Grow. She didn't help you grow. Okay, girls. She helped you grow. So everyone votes and uh, I think most people voted for Harry and Bo. I don't know. Some of them didn't even show who they voted for, but I guess we'll see. The winner who will be leaving with $90,000 is Harry and Bo. <laughs> Wow, so Harry and Bo actually win $90,000. It started off at 200, then they lost 110,000, but they really won a relationship that'll last a lifetime. Nathan came in second, so he wins nothing but the experience of knowing that someone told him to put his heart on his testicles. And Georgia came in third, which he might as well not have like even entered the competition because she's learned nothing. Uh, so then the show ends and everyone starts making out, showing that they've learned absolutely nothing since the show started. And then they run away. And that is how the show ends. My sanity at this point had like completely dipped and I was done with life. But I really thought 
maybe at the end of the show it would be something to look at to see whether these couples stuck together because if you remember um nathan and clay thompson said that they loved each other and you know this was something that clay thompson never felt before and it's like a really tremendous love i know it's only been five days but it should last and so I wanted to see whether it did last. I actually found the article uh, that says whether they're together or not. And let me read it for you. Holly Scarfone and Nathan Son. Yeah, I'm not reading that last name. The two struck up a relationship immediately when entering the villa. And despite challenges the two have faced, they remained strong and ended the season together. On the reunion, they revealed they have broken up. They have a reunion? I have to watch it, don't I? but are open to a relationship again in the future. As of now, they're currently dating other people. So not only did they lose the group 110,000 people, but they also lost themselves. Uh, then we have to look at the couple who won, Bo and Harry, and they had a great relationship throughout the whole show. So hopefully not only did they win the money, but they won the hearts of many and the hearts of their own. They started a relationship halfway through the season and ended winning and dating. On the reunion, they revealed they have broken up. Lovely. Zero for two. This is fantastic. It was believed they have gotten back together, but Bo commented on an Instagram story on Feb 20 that they're just close friends. Right, so they just took the money and ran. Great, 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 great. This is a great, I love this. Is there anyone else? Uh, Brianna and Obi. I never thought they even were in a relationship, but anyway. Brianna and Obi started their relationship soon after she entered the villa. They are no longer together. Sorry, Obi, can't catch a break. Izzy and Jackson. Oh man, I forgot about Horseface. Izzy and Jackson started a relationship soon on to, after he entered the villa. They revealed they are both single after filming. It's always good to know that Netflix has a 0% chance that you're actually going to end up with the person that you start off with on the show. It's not just Love is Blind or The Ultimatum, it's this show too. Every time you go on a reality TV show and they create a fake relationship, it ends in either divorce or a horrible breakup. Chef's kiss, guys. And that is basically uh, Too Hot to Handle. It's, it's, it's a hell of a show. In conclusion, Too Hot to Handle sits in a weird place in my heart. On one hand, the show tries to convince me that its contestants are capable of change. Yet, when I look at their Instagrams and the statuses of their relationship, it's the complete opposite. Instead of learning and growing to have more meaningful relationships, all the show has done is boosted their social media profiles so they have more people in their DMs and can do what they were doing before with more people watching. Hopefully with time everyone grows, like my boy Patrick, who I'd love to interview, 15,000 likes and I'll ask. But until then, you know what they say, too hot to handle, too dumb to change. Love used to be blind once, now it's just strange. Bye. She ain't even got her ass, she did a dash and bit her last, you know a dash and she know.